Hello, gang. For the Dennis Typewriter downtown MacArthur Park, Los Angeles, Harmon Town is now in session. On a rare rainy day in LA, I love it. When it's gray in LA, I like it that way. Let's bring out the game master extraordinaire, Spencer Crittenden. We have a fog machine. Oh, do we? Yeah, I, I now have tuberculosis. Uh, speaking of which, let's bring out the mayor of Harmon Town. You know him. You might like him. You might meet to him. His name is Dan Harmon. Thank you. Very, very polite of you. Uh, all right. It's, it's quite smoky out here right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Smoking. Smoking it up. Smoke machine. Getting rough, rapping to the beat that's there, rapping without a care. Genuine apathy is what I feel. Rapping. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first order of business, let's do apologies and then corrections. The uh, Yay. sorry for last week, uh, my part of it, not uh, anybody else's. I, I, what do you I mean? Was, I was I was blackout drunk, so oh. I, I had to listen. It's a, it's a fitting punishment when I'm like. Look, we we got together. We did some we did some ad reads at like two thirty p.m. that day. Yeah, and I knew what I was doing. I talked to my therapist all about it. I'm like, she's like, you know, it's like, well, yeah, we got everything else squared away. Now that you're almost a perfect person, you know, <laughs> started to talk about the drinking and 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 talking about the drinking means just that, you know, just doesn't have to be a movie of the week or demonized or binary decisions or anything. Let's talk about your relationship with it and. The, I was, I, I, was, I was very I, personally embarrassed by my own definitions. Last week, I couldn't put a thought together. I, 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 I trampled all over the rose garden of a new engagement by, be, by trying to say something about it that I just, just came out as me going like, what if I was a slave? I, I don't even know what I was trying to say. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a fi it's a fitting punishment that I have to listen to the episodes where I don't remember them because then I'm it's like yeah it's like nose and shit kind of like uh, listen to what you said I mean yeah airlines are criminal organizations <laughs> there I said it it doesn't need to be seventy minutes I don't know why I think no one agrees with me but. Apparently, it's just like there's a certain like line of alcohol where I just don't know anyone has heard me and that I've said the thing. And so I, 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 but it, it's like just I'm already normally when I'm sober or a little tipsy, like I'm naturally stammery and babbly and embarrassing and confessional and uh, and awkward. But uh, I think there's a there's a, a deal is broken when I come out so incoherent that I may as well be. Like anybody, there, there's times though, Dan. Like uh, as I've known you for a thousand years, uh, th that you're. Let me get a drink we, while you're talking. Okay. <laughs> there's times when, like, w when you're really drunk. Like when I get really drunk, I I cannot talk. You can talk drunk, and and sometimes when you're saying things drunk, drunkenly, to adverbize that, uh, you still are kind of making sense. And I wonder, am I just being dumb right now? Like, are, are you making a profound thought uh, or, or are you just... No, I probably make no sense. Yeah. I, 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 and you're probably drunk too when I'm drunk because we're probably drinking together because <laughs> what, like, why else would you and I be so shit-faced? Like, the answer is each other. Yeah. Uh, bad, bad for each other. Yeah. We're like the opposite of a mongoose and a cobra. And no, I don't mean a cobra and a mongoose. I mean... See, I, you're I drunk. Mean, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, what, I mean what, the opposite what, of the what relationship. What does happen is your your metaphors get mixed into a a jambalaya. Yeah, like, that only happens when he's drunk. <laughs> I want to be clear on this. Your metaphors are great. No, this is a very pithy observation. You can't just invert the co cobra mongoose relationship. You end up with the exact same thing. Right. You're just going to turn one person into the mongoose. All right. All they right. still hate each other. Uh, so yeah, exactly. How, how drunk are you right now? Like one, like one to a hundred. Uh, sober as a non-Supreme Court justice. You know, um, when in <laughs> so, sober as a Kavanaugh. See, so sober that I'm doing boring, <laughs> semi-topical, non-applicable humor. <laughs> like, oh, he's famous for beer, right? Uh, like, 
uh, Madonna's a whore and Kevorkian kills people. Yeah, I'm sober. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember Dr. Kevorkian. There, there is a saying, people say, I'm sober as a judge, and I, I don't know if that's meant to be... That's what I, I meant. I, I, was, I, I was, Ironic or, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say sober as a judge, and then I was like, ooh, uh, uh, fun, fun thing to do. It's dumb. dumb well, get, like, I'm not saying I'm funny when I'm sober, I'm, I'm, uh, or, or, or interesting or entertaining. I'm just saying, for me, it's like $5, $10, whatever you pay to listen to me talk for, for a little while. Like, I, my definition of you, malpractice is I don't understand what you're even trying to say. Yeah. Like, like, like you ju you're just like figure aiding like in, in nonsense. It's like even Jeff Bridges figured out what he meant <laughs> at the Golden Globes. Like he right. eventually. Yeah, so, somebody asked me recently, like, what, what is Harmontown? Is it improv? I go, it, I, I, I would just define it more as drunken malfeasance. Yeah, I mean, it's self-destruction, I think, you know, like a little confession, a little transparency at the risk of, you know, a little, it's like a, 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 a rich man's NASCAR. <laughs> you technically, supposedly, you don't want to see me burned to death, but <laughs> let's face it, what, do you like watching me go in circles? <laughs> yeah! Rich oh, man's man. NASCAR! <laughs> We okay, really so did. that's my apology. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't mean I owe you an apology. I, I owe anybody... Well, I owe you an apology if you guys get, came here last week. Uh, I, think, I think if you come out, you come out in the rain or a shine or whatever, you leave your apartment, you're risking your life for me. It's uh, Logan's Run out there. No, wait, Logan's Run is totally peaceful society. You just have to voluntarily yeah. die yeah. at 30. Yeah. It's like Zardoz out there. It's Zardoz out there. <laughs> 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 it is, it is a 70 tomorrow is a 70% chance of Zardoz. It's rollerball out there, and you're not a professional rollerballer. Yeah. You're one of the audience whose lives we don't really get to see. One day they will come out with a sequel to Rollerball that's like a Rosencrantz-y, gildenstern -y, like look at what it's like to be a rollerball fan. Nobody knows what you're fucking talking about. I don't know about rollerball. And yet, rollerball. So sober as a senator. Ro sober... <laughs> Sober as a Kavanaugh. Okay, uh, th so those are the apologies. Uh, corrections. Okay, the BBC tweeted uh, somebody. I think they tweeted Cody. Uh, no, not Big Black Cock. That's the the the, the, B, the BBC. The news. Uh, 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 the, 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 that's a it's a porn it's a porn brief. Yeah, yeah. We were all thinking it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who among us heard BBC and didn't think Big Black Cock? Big Black Come on. Cock? Let's yeah. be honest. It's, we, we, yeah. It's uh, We're all people. Let's yeah. move on. The uh, POSH does not, is not an acronym. That's Aww. another bullshit thing. Like everything you hear that you hear is an acronym. It's all bullshit. I should have known better. Because it was British, I fell for it. I, I, I perpetuated a thing. Our hopefully new friends, maybe if they come on the show, but if they listen to last week's episode, they probably won't come. Uh, they, they, they'll be like, "Oh, I think they're coming." Uh, I think I think they emailed the the, the ladies I, I was did. referring to for the redheaded podcast, so maybe they'll come. But then I thought, well, let's listen to what they probably listened to. Whoa! Uh, but uh, th I heard from them, and they speak with such dignified grace and poise that uh, I, I just I just kind of swallowed it and repeated it. That posh was an acronym for port out, starboard home. No, it's not. It's a common. It's a, it's a myth in 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 in, in the great uh, kingdom, and uh, it's like it's like I remember my dad telling me that fuck stood for for use of carnal knowledge. Yeah, it's just it's just you no. Know, it's like, it's the truest thing. There's only thing. two words that are actually acronyms. It's laser and scuba. Everything else is yeah. like everything else is an urban legend. There's yeah. nothing. Hey, did you know nothing's an acronym? It stands for non-official yeah. thing. Uh, tactical <laughs> harmony uh, involving n no. That's what. I, 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 like, I, I like snafu and foobar, though. Yeah. Those are real. Okay, foobar um, and snafu no, are real. No, but those are also just acronyms and not words. Um, yeah. But the, well, that's what sucks about linguistics is that, like, the in, unlike, I mean, obviously in history, there's, like, conflicting theories and stuff, but there's generally prevailing opinions. But in linguists, linguistics is like, well, the top five things that could be the words are these, and they're all like, oh, it could be this guy's shoe fell off and it became the word, or it right. could be it used to be logos, which meant this guy's shoe that fell off. And it's just, like, really weird because they're all, like, treated as, like, the real one, but it's like, 
Well, it's probably not even any of these, really. Yeah, I really, from what we really know of language, right. what we know is that the, what would you call it, the uh, refraction, if that's, what, I don't know if that's what you'd call it, like, what is light going through glass? Is that refraction? Diffraction? Uh, Defra- that, what, whatever the, 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 um, uh, the, the medium of time uh, as language moves forward, it, it, it causes so much chaos in ratio right. to linear logical uh, evolution of, of words, like, Oh, did you know? I, I can't even riff an example. I'll just confuse and embarrass. But, but it just the real stuff that we do know about. It, it, it only serves to show you that this that the that the logic is not linear at all in terms right. of how language develops. I, I I'll riff a probably a really embarrassing example because it probably but but just the, the idea that Bill is an abbreviation for William. I just think, and, and every 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 example that's not a guy's name like. Like within our language, like how you know, well, yoke became joke, became toke, became bloke. Like I, it doesn't. There is no logic to right. it. Right. Uh, none of that is real. No, yoke never became joke. There's no. I'm just. I, I. If you. But. 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 It, so that suggests that the things that we have theories about are probably wrong. Yeah, right? they're probably just the best stories that kept persisting. Yeah. yeah there's a series. I, I think it's by. Uh, is it Earl Funk from Funk and Wagnalls? Uh, it, 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 it is. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm getting the name right, if, if it's Earl or not. There's four books, I think, that are about etymology of idioms. Like, why do we say, uh, bury the hatchet? Why do we say, break a leg? Why do we, like, all, all these things. And most of them are like, we don't... We, we, the, right. the jury is still out on that one. Uh, like, we, we, we think it's because of this, but here's the first time it was ever used in print. And I, and I, I can't get enough of that. Because there, there's a big debate about why it's break a leg. All right, and and I I love that because we really don't know. Uh, it's, it's I, gr- I grew up with people saying like, oh, it's the opposite of good luck because you're not supposed to be superstitious in the theater. They say have the they're saying have the opposite of a great show, so you have a good show. But then you told me, yeah. no, it's like you break a leg when you bow. Uh, right. So they're like, and you would bow if they were applauding and, at and all. It, it's saying make it to the end, yeah. like, like get to the bow, survive, yeah. be, be more interesting than the bear stabbing down the street. Uh, Hard to beat. <laughs> To the point where you have to actually yeah. do something at the but end also, of your play. Re- re- reading these, these books because they're so old, I, I think I used one like you know episode seven of of uh, Harmontown where I said poor as Job's turkey. Like damn, Job's turkey. You know that turkey was broke because Job <laughs> lost everything. Because the, and if he had a turkey, Job's most prized <laughs> family members were Murdered. were fodder for a <laughs> jealous god. Right. So of course his turkey his probably turkey was pretty up, yeah. stringy. Yeah. Pretty, 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 pretty untended to. And I think that uh, Mr. Funk said that uh, it, it was the first time in print, it said, Job's turkey was so poor, it only had one leg, no feathers, and had to lean against a fence to stand up. <laughs> that, that's, oh. a, that's a broke wait, turkey. Wait, why is Mr. Funk uh, explaining what the actual... He's the idiom man. He's, he's the guy that writes the book that says, well, why do we say horse feathers? Why do we say heavens to Betsy? Right, but he's, but yeah, so he's just being colorful, imagining no, no, he, Job's he, turkey? No, no, he's saying, yeah, here's the first evidence of this in print, uh, being poor as Job's turkey, where he had no feathers, one leg, and had to lean against a fence. I'm sorry, no, it's, uh, who, who, who? <laughs> Job's turkey. The, Funk is referring to the first printed use of the phrase, poor as Job's turkey, right? Yes, correct. So that person who used the phrase was explaining Job's turkey? <laughs> yes, he was saying, yeah, I... I, I <laughs> He, he, he was letting you know that this is the first time anyone's ever. Thought. I know what he's doing. Who the fuck is explaining what? Like, I, I would I would have assumed that the that the it, person it, it, that coined it, it was just coining it as an idiom, right? But not let, not let, let, going let, let, not writing let, let, an essay about how ill taken care of. Now just, let me tell you about Job's boat. Let, let's say, <laughs> let's say this seven, thing was small. If if you were reading a newspaper in 1745. And somebody referred to somebody being poor as Job's turkey. Right. You you would just let that pass by, and you okay. That that sounds like a broke ass turkey. I feel like we're having two different conversations okay. here. Yeah. You, who said Job? Who went into this lengthy description of the turkey, though? A think, mystery person. I think Earl Funk says that the, the first guy that ever used it said poor as Job's turkey, comma. <laughs> who was so, so when you when you coin an idiom, you have to actually show your math. <laughs> you have to you have to be like This is right. this This, this, is, new this spectacle is colder than a witch's tit, comma, semicolon uh, a very uh, cold witch thing. tits, uh, 
the flesh being furthest from the body of an already unaccommodating creature. Uh, e- equally uh, unused, unused as witches are famously uh, 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 non-maternal. Uh, <laughs> you just, you, you just keep, keep, and then, and then, and then, if it catches, if your explanation is good, yeah, the, the peer review in the, the New England Journal of Idioms goes like, Earl Funk comes ah, colder in. than a witch's tit. It scans. I'll write it down. <laughs> you read Per Richard's Almanac? Uh, it's a, he'll, he'll explain what I'm talking about. Trust me, which is tits? Freezing. <laughs> I don't have to explain it. <laughs> Look it it's up. It's in the book. <laughs> Do the medieval equivalent of also, Googling it. Uh, you, you know cold enough to freeze the balls off a brass monkey? Oh, yeah. Freeze the balls off a brass monkey? Yeah. Yeah. I Spence, mean, so Spencer knows. Oh, we all do. But what, so th- you're saying that beyond that, just being a clever way of saying it's cold, like there's actually some logic to it? Yeah. That? Like a brass monkey is typically hot? Oh, yeah. Super hot. Because they're more conductive? Because they're way more. No, um, they're just not kept cold enough to be frozen the balls off of. Because, no, it, because it's, brass? It's, it's, it's Go on, for it's it, It's on Jeff. a sailing ship where there's cannonballs, and there's a, a rack that you keep the cannonballs in. In a and, pyramid. And, and if it's cold enough, the balls, the, the cannonballs in Freeze the rack, together. like in a pyramid f- a fashion, will expand and crack and fly all over the uh, all over the deck. Oh, okay. So that that's it's it's so cold it it froze the balls off the brass monkey and the, for some reason where's the bar, where's the monkey? The that's monkey what is, it's the pyramid the, of the, balls. The, the, the monkey is the rack of where. They oh, can, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was called. No one but did. Also, but that, there, there is some debate about this. We don't know if that's actually why we said right. that. Right. Because all linguist history is just made up. Yeah, it's weird. I always assume was like, well, what time is it? Half past the monkey's ass, quarter to his balls. Like I always just assume that a lot of that our language is monkey. just made up by kids who are like finding out how to say stuff. <laughs> they're kind of like I, there. There was a guy on MSNBC that was a linguist that was talking about Donald Trump's use of language, and he, and he, he was like, yeah, he's a, it's a, it's a surprisingly juvenile use of language for a senior citizen, and that's sort of like part of his, <laughs> like appeal to it's people fucking, yes. because it's like he talks the way, not only the way that we start talking when we're learning to talk, but he also talks the way our species talked when it was learning to talk <laughs> and before it learned to speak. Uh, speaking and talking being two different things, but him being like a pioneer uh, politician who's just like, kind of like a, Duncan Trussell said something terrifying at one point about Trump, which was like, I think he's just the first of a new breed of like, uh, politicians who are going to be like the the your local town's carpet king you know like like you're not gonna you, the, the question is he doing a bit or not is never going to matter anymore it's going to be like part of the job part of the electability you won't be able to be elected by you know by having poise that would be a, a, a silly person's yeah. uh, gambit when you can you can just stick out, and then then only a wise person would would make an ass of themselves while running for president, and et cetera, et cetera. It's sort of like if you, you can forecast the way. I think that's a very optimistic yeah. prediction because it sort of sort of says that our country is going to be around long enough that like we're going to keep having regular elections every four no. years of no. these. We're, we're, we're Venezuela now, uh, but we're not Poland. Oh, no. And I don't want to bring people down, but I got to share the things that bring me down. It's just such a fucking bummer. This uh, mayor in Poland is like doing a charity event, and a dude jumped up on stage and stabbed him to death on the stage. And uh, it it it. Why am I bringing this up? I. I <laughs> I, I, it's a comedy like, show. Like, <laughs> there, but for the grace of God, I don't know. We saw there were swastikas burning in the street in Poland like a year ago. Uh, look, we're in a worldwide uh, right uh, slide. Uh, uh, America no longer has all three branches of government on the right. How long it will last, I don't know. But all of this rhetoric, all of this shit, I believe truly that whereas traditionally, heretofore, fascism's potting soil has been multicultural shifts and economic like roller coasters, that's when people get, they, their, their, their cravings for authoritarianism start to, to get um, tempted. And uh, I think that plus Facebook is, 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 po- is, in the, is going to destroy the planet because we were really not in economic bad shape um, but the 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 arrival of the internet, or rather the arrival of dumb people to the internet, 
uh, they kind of like, they'd never seen the world before. And the first thing they see is, oh my God, there's so much more brown skin or so much more like uppity vagina or so much more than they were used to because their world is going from everything they can see. And trust me, as a guy who's left Twitter, uh, now I'm, I've become much more provincial and simplified. <laughs> like, I, it really happens pretty quickly. Like, I don't know, I don't know nothing about nothing and I'm really happy about it. <laughs> Um, and, and, and then, and then to, to, so, so assuming it works in reverse as well as when you, when our parents got on the internet, my parents, um, Trump's generation, love you, mom, love you, dad, but Jesus Christ, like, like it, it, the, 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 the baby boomer plus the internet is like, it's like they reacted to it as if it was our fault that they were racist. Like <laughs> They're kind of like, what are all these black people doing on my phone? Um, and I think that happened all over the world. I can't it's, call the police on my phone. You can't. You can't. If you, if you, you know, in high school history class, you know, you, you can trace like our sort of like the global rises of militarism, nationalism, isolationism, economic depression, and things that lead to both of the great world wars. And uh, it, it, we, we didn't have that, and yet we're repeating that blueprint without the parts that actually spoke, caused it. Like we, we skip. It's like it's like it's like we in, we invented a weird invisible plexiglass ramp to anti-Semitism and uh, if, if scapegoating immigrants and all these things that traditionally happen because your country has gotten to a point where it's using your currency as a doorstop or toilet paper and, and is using like bottle caps for money. And it like we never got there. There was a there was a housing crisis and a global uh, economic crisis and all this stuff. But we didn't. We it, we had it, YouTube the, autoplay. It's the it's it's the, it's it the, really it's, is. It's the internet's fault. God darn it. That's my point. No, um, it's the algorithms. They like they want clicks and clicks. Uh, you know Nazis click unfortunately, and so it's like yeah, you know it sells. So making people Nazis on accident. Political rhetoric. So this this Polish mayor, 53 years old, uh, a mayor like myself. He was a liberal. He was outspoken. <laughs> he he loved his gay rights. He was Polish. It's not a great time I to think be Jeff's liberal. I think Jeff's gonna stab you, Dan. That's not. What, that's not funny. That really happened. <laughs> I, I, the, the, uh, he was, he was, fucking, he was doing I'll, this charity event. I'll, I'll and, stick uh, you, man. I'll fucking a crazy make guy that, of course, they're calling a lone wolf, and he's crazy. He's crazy. I'll yes, I agree. You, Jack. What are you saying? I'm gonna cut you. <sighs> this isn't the, the funny portion of the show. I'm, I'm doing my Springer's first thoughts. <laughs> first thoughts. Uh, Springer's opening arguments. <laughs> Um, it, I just, you know, I have no solutions and I have no, I have no appeal. I, 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 I will, I would die for my freedom of speech. I would die for other people's freedom of expression. I do not believe that laws need to be created to, uh, mitigate the way people speak. I believe that free speech, have, have we noticed, has consequences anyway. Uh, 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 let's talk about that weatherman that got fired for accidentally making the sound coon while he was saying Martin Luther King's name. Let's just talk about that in a second. Like, I mean, we, we love firing people. Like, we, you, you, you. But unless you're a Nazi, like like you, if you're if you're if you, I don't. Th th we're in trouble if we continue to um, uh, uh, ostracize each other and divide each other based on language. We're, we're basically handing the opposite of kryptonite to the to the more nihilistic, more sociopathic of of two sides of a political spectrum. The 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 party that this poor. Mayor was the most outspoken against the, 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 the in this in his right leaning Poland. Uh, they had issued death certificates for liberal politicians. He was very outspoken about that in particular. Uh, can you imagine the irony? Can you imagine the, the like this guy's final thoughts as he's being stabbed in the fucking heart in front of his constituency, and that all the cell phones are just out and like, I, I like it. it it, the pictures are so disturbing and confusing. It, 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 I, I, the, the guy was the most outspoken about the, the, the rhetoric and how violent it was getting and how disgusting. These, these people who have nothing to lose and only the mentally ill to play with um, and only, only, only they have nothing to lose and everything to gain from triggering a fucking psychopath. By the way, one in a hundred people is so out of their gourd. God bless you. Probably a disproportionate number of them in my listenership, so sure. like, like what, we love you, welcome. You, you, if you're psychotic, you're not automatically a murderer. But right. one in a hundred people is 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 vulnerable to fucking messaging, and we 
we, we, we just got this like weird ability to all talk to each other all the time about whatever we want. And it, we, it, the, the politicians have arrived in that arena and they're, the thugs among them are going like, yeah, someone should kill that bitch. Well, if that bitch then gets killed, like, I, I, you know, we're gonna keep having this conversation. Uh, th this isn't clearly about gun control. The guy, the guy crawled up on a stage with a knife. The, 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 the government was trying to say, uh, it wasn't political, we didn't understand his motivation. He literally waved the knife around and said, I did this because this guy's political party locked me up. He was like a mentally ill like guy who, who had his mentally ill life that was in and out of prison and stuff. And he, he decided to blame this political party that was also uh, being uh, uh, told to die by, these, by the opposition who were issuing like hilarious death certificates for liberal politicians. Our now deceased mayor of this Polish town was among the few who was going, guys, he went to his government and said, you should, you should look at this as incitement of violence in a very dangerous time. And the government said to him, no, it's freedom of expression. Um, it's a way of saying you disagree with someone politically to say they should die. And then, he's, then he died. He was stabbed in front of everyone. So like, I am never gonna let anybody tell me what to say. But what the fuck, man? We get fired for saying the wrong shit. Like, and we're, we're, we're extending that to everyone but politicians. <clears throat> the only thing I wanted to say about that weatherman guy, by the way, was that I'm sure you've read that story. I, if I've read it, you've read it. Like, but there was this weatherman, do you, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I, when I he go was trying, he was, he, was, he was speeding through. I actually didn't watch the clip. I, I'm inclined to take his word for it because I don't believe because you, you talk on microphones. You, you, you don't. Yeah, I mean, I I just don't. I I just don't believe that the way you find out someone's racist is like a sound coming out of their mouth. I really don't. I mean, that's right. different from saying like a speech on the corner where you reveal like like I think that if your skin is this color, you're a worse person than this person. I just don't. I I don't. I think it's a dangerous way of thinking. But also, it's it's not like. It's not like somebody led that pack. It's sort of like, this is what we make vulner people vulnerable to. I put the blame on corporations. Media corporations are, need to stop firing people within eight hours of Twitter trending them. It has to stop. Right. That's uh, what it, Gamergate it, it, did. It, 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 I'm sure it's regrettable within 16 hours. I, it, it, they, they, I almost got fired. I mean, if I had gotten fired, Rick and Morty would have been over. I, it was like we went from, yay, 70 episodes to like I had to spend three months wondering whether there was ever going to be a show again because in 2009, I humped a doll in a, in a, in a video that, that, that somebody called a number at Turner because they associated it with a blog entry they saw about someone else anonymously, and I was being investigated for fucking child sex trafficking, like because AT and T didn't want to take any chances. Like I, like we have to. This isn't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not personalizing this. Or if I did, it would sound a lot like that. But <laughs> I'm saying I. I'm having this experience and I'm not accidentally saying anything. I accidentally humped a doll in 2009. Probably not a great idea. Doesn't seem too funny these days. Um, but like, mm, like, 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 like the, the parallel universe that almost got created because I did that 10 years ago is pretty extreme stuff. And it's not the Nazis that, 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 that Nazis, have a right within our country to operate within the dark bowels for no money and try to make people mad and racist at each other. Like, they, they're pretty underfunded and pretty hard to, they, they, they don't show up to a lot of meetings after a while. Like, they, 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 it left to their own devices, they are not the threat. I believe that when their antagonism meets, is, 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 it has its hands shaken by timid, cowardly, weird, reactive, scary insurance companies and corporations. That's when we're in trouble. Somebody's got to somebody's got to like like realize that this new world means a new policy is necessary for, and that all of us like Andy Warhol's wrong now. Like we're all not going to be famous for 15 minutes. We're all in constant rotation, going to get fucking crop dusted with viral. Parasites. Like, we're all gonna, every once in a while, find ourselves in the midst of a crazy, entropic, weird social phenomenon, and corporations owe it to us to not base whether they, we show up to work the following morning on that. I, I, well, the only thing I wanna say about that, 
I, 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 is, now, assuming that, assuming that, forget it for a second, whether or not that guy is more or less racist than any weatherman. Wait, so, um, so, so I, I was out of town. Say again. What, okay, sorry, sorry. The guy was saying something. I don't know. He was doing his weather report, and he must have been. He was trying to say Martin Luther King Jr. Or say, there was an event that was going to be at Martin Luther King Jr. Park, and I think he said something like Martin Luther Coon King Jr. or something like that. He stumbled, right, right. and it sounded like the word Coon in the midst of a civil rights leader that was. Yeah, it's really not ideal, and. <laughs> And it, and it went and, and, and they didn't they didn't catch it or do anything about it at the time, and it went viral, and then he got fired. And uh, last couple of days I've been seeing in the within the news cycle he's that he's that lower left kind of story where he continued. Oh, Al Roker says he believes this guy or whatever. It's just kind of it's as ridiculous as it should be the situation when we're talking about something so silly, and, and I, 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 the only thing that I wanted to say about it, because I'm sure everyone's capable of having their own conversation about it, I'm not gonna add anything to it, except this. <laughs> assuming he is no more or less racist than, than, than any other weatherman, assuming that you can tell whether he is or isn't uh, by, by, by sound eruptions that come out of his mouth, I, I only ask this question, it was, this is not a political or philosophical stance I'm taking, I just thought of this and it was like, you know, I, I think I might be right about this. I want to check. It, isn't weatherman the only job you could do capably while racist? <laughs> like, if you gave me the ability to eliminate racism from any field, and it had like 10 charges in it, I would get to food service way before... I tried, I tried running on my list, I was like, carpentry. No, no, I don't want a racist making my chairs. I just feel like it's probably like the one thing you could do without hurting anybody and be totally racist. But hey, who is that guy with the swastika on his face in the cafeteria? He's not touching my food, is he? No, he's the weatherman. Okay. He can't control the weather, can he? No, no, that would be then, you know, like make sure, let's police that field for racism if you can make it rain on so, certain so neighborhoods. You're saying, we're finding out that you're soft on racist weathermen. I am, I, am, I am either incredibly uh, uh, disrespectful towards meteorology <laughs> uh, or I am biased about the idea that w the first people that are getting fired are, happen to be the people who have to talk into microphones w every day for, it's like, okay, come on, like, like. It, 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 that is the. It, it, would, it would be kind of fun, like if, if, like Channel Five and KTLA in Los Angeles had just racist weatherman, like, and he re, he gave you the weather, and he was really good at it. But just he as also, an experiment, just he, to see if it changed, just he, to see if it hurts anybody. He also just slipped in some just full on racism during it, during it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You could try different things each week. Like, here's our misogynist weatherman. Like, uh, well, there's a cold front coming in. Not as cold as women can be toward me. <laughs> uh, I deserve sex, but, uh, but, 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 but lower SoCal deserves this cold front coming in, and uh, we'll be back with sports uh, with our Scientologist. Let's see, let's see what hurts. Just, just, just for fun, and this is a comedy bit, do racist weatherman. I just, I just did enough. Uh, <laughs> frenemy. Do... do do uh, the, a, a weatherman who hates Turks. <laughs> Why? I, to for, what end? For comedy. And for memes and for you to get fired. My, my quote-unquote joke was, isn't weatherman the one occupation that you could, be, could do without, while being racist? I did not get the laugh I expected. Uh, the, 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 I was just working out new material. The, uh, the, the, the laugh I, was, I, was, I thought I might get would be like a creeping one where everyone thought about it like I had. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, I actually... Actually, if you ranked every job in the entire planet, like, like, like where, and you had to put your most racist person on your island community, if you had to put him in one place, you, the weatherman seems like the safest place. And that's if the guy's racist. But, but is, is, he a great, is he a great weatherman? Like, like, oh, he's it, the best. He's, 
<laughs> oh, thank God. I, I didn't watch the clip. I'm sure he's just a guy that, 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 that I mean, well, now we know he's a guy whose life is probably ruined. I, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening for very good reasons who are going, boo-hoo, smallest violin playing for that guy when blah 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 So I'm, I'm not like, oh my God, the world's going to go to hell because you fired a fucking uh, uh, a white weatherman and uh, like, I don't want to, I don't want to bat for that team. But I, I am, I am, I am once again, as I, as I will continue to do, I am saying as a, as a, as a fellow left, leftist, like barbarian, like, man, we got to get our tribes together because the only people that don't follow this, this fucking weirdly stringent <laughs> book of rules are the people that are, they're the most hateful in their hearts of all hearts. The people who actually want to tear us asunder and trample us and remove us. Uh, they, they often, often know exactly which words not to say. Uh, case not in point, our president, but uh, it, it's like, look at the passes you get if you bat for the other team, and like, can we just, <sighs> boy, why, like, it, th th that's why I'm saying, like, corporations help us out, because people can't, if I retweet somebody saying something embarrassing on the news, it's not, I, we can't legislate that. It's not my fault that that person gets fired. Like I don't even if I even if I see it out of context and I'm like hashtag fire that fucker, I should be able to do that. If you can buy a gun in our society and not and not be a part of the problem, then you should be able to lose yourself in a crazy viral uproar and and adamantly say fuck this racist fucker. He should be stripped of all of his rights and paraded into the ocean on Twitter as a private citizen, and then six hours later be like, Jesus Christ, he's a human being, what the fuck, I was drunk, and not find out that you were part of getting him fired. And the only way to change that is if the actual fire, fire, firing people, the, the, the dragons with the fucking fire breath, uh, <laughs> they've got to change. And I don't know, so I don't know, I don't know what to do. Okay, our next segment is called, uh, <laughs> no, just racist weatherman. Okay, a few more thoughts about that. Racist uh, weatherman. So God bless you, Polish mayor uh, Ad Ad Adamowicz. I can't remember Pavel Pavel Adamowicz. I think that was his name. I think there was a, a a British MP named Joe Cox or someone who also got murdered in a similar situation where someone one of her political opponents was like, ah, oh, yeah, someone should kill this person or you know she's she's so dangerous that someone should stop her or something, and then someone like shot her with an improvised gun or something and she died. It was no good. Bullies, man. Can't it's like it's the thing. It's like we gotta we gotta stand up against bullies. Like if the person that you're uh, uh, challenging, hurting, whatever, like just run it through the litmus test of am I doing anything risky? Am I risking anything? And is this other person like so much more powerful than me that I I can't hurt them by by doing this? And like run it run it through that test, like because we need to all be united against the people that punch down, um, and 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 that, and that can actually hurt us because it's it it could get it could get bad so fast. Like, it, 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 these are our cousins abroad. This, these are the societies that are going through the same shit for whatever creepy reason. I blame Facebook. Everyone's like... Well, it is Facebook. This is an issue, and everyone's, everyone's in these right slants. So, like, God, please let us, let us emerge as the weirdly ironic, like, uh, sensible one in this thing and lead everyone to back to regular-ass gridlocked bureaucracy where I was so comfortable... I just want to die in peace. I don't want to. I don't want to die screaming in fear. I don't want to die by racist. Yeah, man. Actually, that's better than colon cancer, though, right? Like, I, I, I just. It, it, maybe if I got, if you could pick your age, you could go like, well, when was I going to die of colon cancer? Sixty-seven. You get a bad colon. Uh, okay. Can you? Can you? I'll pay you a million dollars to make me colon cancer free until 67 and I will agree to be killed by racist. Well, I mean, yeah, that sounds great. Like that would if be a it's cool that society. My, like yeah. Especially if you could be in the you, you could be like, "Okay, so now I'm going to since I'm going to get killed by racist, I'm going to I'm going to speak my mind at this rally and like, okay, send them up." Oh. And then like you 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 set a price that you're willing to pay and then other people can like try and outbid you for that death. 
Right. Because your death won't go viral after a while. Right. It'll be like the new colon cancer is being an upstanding person. <laughs> We'll enter an arms race of being like profound people with integrity. <laughs> Irish elections. Yeah. Irish elections. It's a new segment about Irish elections. I feel bad for the people that listen to this show and Radio Lab because they're like, all he does is repeat everything from Radio Lab. Uh, apparently the <laughs> Irish, let me know what you think about this system, Jeff. All right. The Irish have this ranked voting system. Oh, yeah, we use that in Maine. Yeah, we're starting to experiment with it in local communities. Yeah, it, that will, uh, like a, a leftist like person or something won in, in America in a race because we used that the last midterm. So it was this great. idea of not one person, one vote, but you, 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 you rank your top five choices in order from one to five. Now, you're already going too complicated. It'll never work. It has to be simple. You're allowed to just mark one person. Number that's one, your, Bernie number Sanders. One. You, can, you, can, you can do the same thing you've been doing. Number two, Hillary Clinton. Uh, the, uh, but in this version, like number they, three, Jill Stein. You, 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 everyone goes one through five. <laughs> so they count the number ones first, Gary and Johnson. then they start eliminating from the bottom of the number ones. Joe Biden. So everyone that had a number, everyone who, uh, everyone who voted for Bernie him, Sanders. What is the bit? No, I'm I'm trying to help explain. Every everyone who uh, everyone whose number one candidate gets eliminated in Bernie the beginning Sanders. of the counting process, <laughs> their number two choice goes back into the pool and starts getting counted as if it's another ballot. Right. So if you if you voted, so there's no like nadir complex thing there where people are blaming there's each no other, way. and there's no disenfranchisement of of voting because you're 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 conscious. Conscience as a voter is being reflected as a kind of like more modern kind of hash array of 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 tastes and choices. So it's what, it's like a bell curve of like 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 oh like there was more twos and three choices than there were number one. In the event of a huge division among people of splintering, then what's going to come to the rise to the top is everyone's second or third choice, which which means that you can't it de incentivizes. Uh, uh, the idea of shutting people out, and, and which, which really is, a, in my opinion, that's like a great cure for, for the virus of fascism because it really, um, you can't run on the ticket of, come on, everyone wants to say it, but no one's saying it, even though 30% of us are the ones saying it. Everyone else is so fucked right now. If we all, 30% of us, are get really fucking loud and scary, we'll outnumber everyone else because they're so splintered and arguing with each other, that would never happen because not only do candidates need to consider how, uh, how they're perceived by the people that won't vote for them because you want that edge of being a people's second choice at least. Uh, it's going to change the behavior of campaigns and candidates really fast. Only an idiot would be so rhetorically exclusive. They, they would be making this huge gamble, an appropriate gamble. You'd have to really believe in white nationalism, for instance, if you really like refused to bend a little bit about it rhetorically during your campaign because you would be betting that if everyone made me their last fucking choice except for 30% of the people who made me their number one, I'll still win because you know what? No, there's no leadership here. That's a good. That's an appropriate, proportionately a, a gamble for you to make as a candidate, and and it, it just it just causes this like it's like a nice little Nyquil on your election. So, uh, so Ireland does this already, and Maine yeah. is also doing it. They're doing it for I think Senate races or congressional races in Maine, yeah. but yeah, Ireland everywhere. There was an election nerd on this radio lab who who was saying like you know the the way the Irish look at the, the American uh, electoral system is they look at it like an IBM laptop from the 90s. Like you 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 guys got your democracy in the 1700s, and it was like. It's it's this symbol of 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 how everything was going to end up being, and it's the most and it's the thing that everyone covets, and 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 it's it's so, it's so powerful and so amazing. But from back then, and has and is now in danger of becoming absolutely symbolic of clunkiness and oppression and disenfranchisement. Like not, it's got viruses and bugs and worms because, oh, it was so perfect and it's so state of the art that it's not changing as fast. Well, the Irish, they got their democracy in the 1920s, so they were like, I don't know, uh, fuck, like, 
can't really fuck, fuck this up, right? Let's try some different shit. Um, sorry, Irish friends, that was a horrible accent. <laughs> also, the sentiment was awful, too. Uh, the, the, but, but no, but they're, they're lean and mean and they, they didn't, they didn't, they, 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 they were like, okay, let's, how do we do this right? And they came up with this kind of weird channel 101 voting system where you like, your, your ballot is five choices. It, I, the more I think about it, the more, the more sense it actually makes. Yeah. So the problem with our system, right? The problem with our system is that it's counterintuitive because what you think you're doing is voting for the person you want, but because of the election dynamics, you're actually just voting against the person that you don't want. So you vote for Hillary Clinton because you don't want Donald Trump to win. But a vote for Hillary Clinton doesn't make her win. It actually just prevents Donald Trump from winning. Yeah. So you're, you're only voting against your least preferred candidate. But in ranked choice vote, voting, you actually are voting for your favorite person. And then your next favorite person, you're never voting against someone. Or you can, you put them as the last rank. So you would put Donald Trump as like seven. If there's 100 people on an island and 30 of them want Elizabeth Warren and 30 of them want Hillary Clinton and 20 of them want Bernie Sanders, it, like, Donald Trump shouldn't win. Right, exactly. It should, it should, we don't know who will win on the other side, but it's like, it should be a no-brainer. But, like, this one-person, one-vote thing, it's it counterintuitive. creates disenfranchisement, it creates nihilism, it creates, like, this idea of, like, why am I going to go to the polls? I'm not going to get counted anyway. Holy shit, everybody gets counted in, like, a really weird way when you do this voting system. Like, yeah. you're, you're, no matter how outside the fucking game you are representatively like you you you're you you can watch this thing like a horse race and you're like that's mine that's that, that's because i picked her for third um you're 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 invested the whole time i think you feel represented uh we're never we're not going to change anything we're going to go down fucking maybe not in flames maybe we'll go down like uh, uh singing a fun McDonald's. song or something i don't know it was weird. I said, we're going to go down, dot, dot, dot. And you were like, in flames? <laughs> <You're> like, no. <laughs> you're like, I, I don't know. It's, a, it's like you're having trouble. <laughs> in flames, that's it. <laughs> How are we going to go down? Uh, I did, like, I, I've talked too many politics, but uh, I did as an exercise today. I, uh, it was a weird, oh, I can't, I can't zoom in on these things. Come on. What are you trying to zoom in on? On a, a screen grabs that I took. Because I was like, my experiment today was I was like, I'm feeling so satisfied right now. I'm like not as phobic. Poland notwithstanding the world, I'm still scared about the world, but I'm, I'm feeling comfortable right now. I'm reading the news on the toilet because I, 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 oh, I like it when Trump's in a bad mood. It's funny and like I, I, it makes me feel comfortable. I like an embattled like like a uh, government who's like, you know, where everything's in gridlock and stuff. And like, it makes me feel comfortable. It makes me feel like maybe I'll live to see my sixties. And like when things are like impossible to happen and the, and the worst among us are so frustrated by that, that our true colors come out and actually people judge them for it. So I'm in a good mood lately about politics domestically, but it also then made me go, why are you such an elitist snob? Like, like, what do you like? Like, like, now that you feel comfortable, why don't you think about uh, other people? It was like, like we're, we're learning a lot about narcissism and stuff from like studying the president, and I'm seeing a lot of myself in him and like trying to use it as like teachable moments where I'm like, you know, that's, that's a lot like me, the, the way he's reacting to that, or, or I'm better than that because of this, and like maybe I can be even better than that by not judging it, and I, I was like, I, 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 I became determined today to find, like, inspiring Donald Trump quotes. Mm. That, that's, uh, that's thirsty work. <laughs> yeah. I was like, as an, I was, I was like, I was like st now that there's not this, like, kind of rabid fear, this echo chamber -y kind of like, he's the worst, and I refuse to accept that he's not the worst. Like, I kind of, it was just enough that I was like, what if I recreationally, what if I was like, I, I stepped into the shoes of a fan, and I'm like, I want to find him saying some cool stuff. What if my only modifier was the word very? <laughs> But I can't, I can't, I didn't, I didn't anticipate this. Is, oh, wait, okay, I double click it. That was a very funny joke by a very funny guy. <laughs> I'm the very funniest. So Dude. I literally Googled like uh, s Trump smart quotes. <laughs> okay, no, okay now, now I'm in. 
Uh, if the word varies in there, I, I get $100. It was funny. The, fir the first thing that came up was that, like, like, like there's a couple funny things that happened. It, here's a quote. It is a real honor and privilege to endorse Mitt Romney. Mitt is tough. He's smart. He's sharp. He's not going to allow bad things to continue to happen to this country we all love. That's the first, that's the first one at the top of the thing. I'm like, that's not really very smart. He, lo he, he loves himself some Mitt Romney. And then the second quote was, but I have to say, probably when I'm about 30, I'll be pretty, not settled, but happy with what I've accomplished so far. I'm happy where I am now. That's an Amy Smart quote. So I already, that's how few smart quotes Donald Trump has. I Googled Trump smart quotes, got one quote from Trump about Mitt Romney that didn't involve dyslexia. And then the second thing down was someone named Smart saying something. He's good fun, though. <laughs> but so, I, did, I did find some stuff where I was like, uh, uh, you know, do you want to play a game? It's like... I love games. Uh, you want to play a game called, uh, do, did, I, did I save this quote because I thought it was dumb, gross, or reminded me too much of myself? I think those are the three categories. <laughs> quote, Trump, quotes... Dumb, gross, or wait, wait, I, or I, too close to home Spencer, for me. Spencer and I, the audience get to guess on these, or well, they, uh, let's not give the audience any power. <laughs> yeah, I like this. No, they'll just, they'll just they'll, they'll, you, power you, not to the people. We don't want to tell them. Hey, so you either need to shout out "dumb, gross," or this long sentence. Like that's good. Uh, even, even they're not going to like that show. Dumb, gross, or. Dumb, gross, or too close to home. Too close to Let's home. Let's say that. Meaning, meaning, I saved it because I'm like, you know what? Be honest, Harmon. This sounds like something you'd say. Okay. That's why you don't like it. So, him. dumb, gross, or Harmon? Yeah. Dumb, gross, or Harmon. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here's our new segment. Dumb, gross, or Harmon. Dumb, gross. Okay, wait. Wait. Let's start. You know, start. Can you start it over? That seemed like it was just in the middle of the. Yeah. Can you start it? Nah, that's see. definitely in the middle. You don't want me to succeed because well, no, you, get, you get paid to make up songs on the road, so you're afraid. You're afraid. <laughs> They're gonna hire Dan. They're gonna scoop Jeff. You're afraid Drew Carey's gonna take me to Florida. <laughs> Dumb, gross, or harmon. These are things our president said. All right, that's enough. So these are Donald Trump quotes, and we have to judge whether they're dumb, gross, or harmon. Okay, yeah. I don't make deals for the money. I've got enough, much more than I'll ever need. I do it to do it. Harmon. Yeah, harmon. Now, gross. Darn. <laughs> no, no, because wait, 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 because wait, I do things for the money. You, you get to vote too? What? You get to vote as well? Well, yeah, I'm going to tell you why. I have the answer. You don't get to decide. Well, what if we outvote you? It's your opinion. You can tell me your opinion, but it won't be my opinion. Majority rules. What if we all say that sounds like a harm? Well, then, then you, we you guys are we assholes. No. Point. <laughs> No, I mean, you, you guys can make your own no. decision. I, yeah. but I, I, by applause, <laughs> who votes dumb on that one? Who votes gross? He just wants to hurt you. Who votes Harmon? Okay, so that, that's a Harmon quote. I don't think this is how the game works. It, it is now. Uh, that's fair. Money was never a big motivation for me, except as a way to keep score. The real excitement is playing the game. Gross. Gross. Yeah, I also thought that was gross. Here's a, here's a quote. I make money because I have to pay for everything apart from my school fees. My mm. mother even makes me pay my own telephone bill. What? That's a, that's a, that's a Nirvana Trump that's quote. Sorry. Oh. That's a Nirvana Trump quote. Okay. Uh, uh, from okay. when? The past? As long as you're going to be thinking anyway, think big. Dumb. 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 Yeah. Uh, without passion, you don't have energy. Without energy, you have nothing. Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> a little more moderation would be good. Of course, my life hasn't exactly been one of moderation. Harmon! Oh! oh. <laughs> so, yeah! So also, also, the Harmon category can you... also be kind of like, I'm like, I'm like, like, you know, if he only said this stuff, like, he might be my guy. You know, <laughs> like, like be, because, because for better or for worse, I'd be like, 
because it would be minus the, well, I'm not going to give you a, a key to solve the uh -oh. riddle, but <laughs> this is one that I truly just don't understand. And I, so I, 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 th this one I just screen grabbed because I was like, first of all, what the, 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 the first thing the secretary types is the boss. Hell yeah. That's fucking bad. And I screen grabbed it because it, it's from That's this. an alpha male. It's from this website where you, 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 you get quotes and they're like tag clouded. The tags for this quote are boss, first, secretary, thing, types. Fair. Yeah, sometimes you're looking for a quote. What, the first thing the secretary types is the boss? What does that mean? The boss said, did, 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 get, me a, get me a taco bowl. Like the boss said. So I, if I type you, I'm getting your taco bowl or what? what the secretary takes notes of what you're saying, like by saying like, oh, the boss is saying this, maybe. The boss, the boss, the boss, the boss, the boss. Like he, he starts oh, everything. Oh, the boss. Really? The secretary is taking notes of the conversation. That First thing the secretary yeah, types. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go harming with that one. Oh, 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 wait, no. Maybe what, <laughs> maybe what, maybe what that means is, is, is like, the first thing the secretary types is the, the thing that decides the policy at the office or whatever. It's the first thing that he dictates to he or she and says, the boss wants this, the boss says that. But isn't there kind of like behind every great boss? Is it like, it's a, doesn't it, isn't that sort of like giving like, isn't that sort of like that's why, that's hint, why hint, the secretary's really running the show? Or am I... I don't know what why you would set the first I get thing that the interpretation, types, yeah. It almost seems like 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 it's just like badly improvised porn dialogue. Oh, for like, sure. Like, oh, she came in and she typed me, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. That uh, there's nothing even remotely yeah. phallic about typing. Uh, like like yeah, my like my dick's like a key. <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of thing an idiot would say. I have an attention span that's as long as it has to be. I, li I like that one, yeah. Yeah. Uh one of the key problems today is that politics is such a disgrace, good people don't go into government. Dumb. P dumb and gross, but also, I, I agree. Uh, uh, I'm the Ernest Hemingway of 140 characters. Harmon! Harmon! Uh, that's a fucking... I also saved that one, because that's it's a probably, capital it's a, This Harman. joke's in poor taste, but the th first thing I thought when I read that, it was like, well, let's hope that metaphor follows through. <laughs> Hey, oh. <laughs> Here's one that's interesting. I, so some of these I just grabbed because I'm interesting. Because uh, I'm interesting. Uh, Harmon. Harmon. Uh, I'm like very, very interesting. I'm like the most interesting. Uh, no, uh, it's, it, he, apparently he said at one point, who knows when, if I don't get along with Democrats, I'm sort of like out of business. Where's that guy? That that's neither that sounds dumb, presidential. That's neither dumb, gross, or Harmon. That, that's I know. That's, that's it sounds like a president, doesn't yeah, it? It sounds, sounds like a grassroots, like working class, like actual. Yes, yeah, it sounds like Calvin Coolidge. Like 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 Harry Truman, like desegregating the army. Be why? B because he was so woke? No, because it saves money. Like 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 all paths lead to Rome. You know, like that grassroots fucking Midwest capitalist. Like let's stop hating each other because we can make more money. See, now you're making it gross. I, well, gr gr gross away. I mean, that's part of Harmon and part of him. And it's like if he, I, I just, I, I, I just spent today like looking through these and I was like, what about the, what about, what about the him that might have existed if someone hadn't like come to him and shown him Cambridge Analytica figures that said like, you know, if you wear a, a fucking figurative turquoise belt buckle out there and start getting a little like fucking like like uh, 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 race baity like that's going to take you up 10% in this district like because obviously what we know about the guy is that he says he all he wants is to be liked I mean it wasn't I don't even I, I think he's as racist as everybody his age like like and probably like and that's 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 really racist because race racism doesn't age well. It, it it doesn't even it's not even cool when it's freshly born. But it's like, it really gets its ugliest right before you shake your cane into the into the tomb. And and, and <laughs> say la vie. That's why we don't tend to listen to old people's opinions about whether or not you should marry somebody or or what you should do at your wedding. And and and, and like so I, I it's like I think that the guy is just like. He was a Democrat, and then he was an Independent, and then he was a Republican, and he's just like, he's just like, oh, just want to win. And like somebody was like, you know, you should be racist, and he's like, that's easy. <sighs> just trying to be on his side. That's as best I can do. Yeah. 
what my father <laughs> gave me more than anything else is great tutoring and a great brain, frankly. You know, my father's brother was a top person at MIT, went to MIT, graduated from MIT, was a teacher at MIT, a professor at MIT, a great engineer. I mean, you know, I have very good genes. That was his father's brother. Yeah. He just, yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Harmon on that one. No, just dumb, <laughs> dumb, absolutely dumb. Like, what, you just told me your uncle's uh, smart and that you have good genes. Like, you, no, the, you, yeah. you go to MIT. No. He went to MIT. So your Trump, genes didn't Trump go to MIT. Trump has the, uh, the intellectual wattage of a half a saltine cracker. There's something, there's something, there's something that's, that's, that's dumb with a big uh, whipped cream of gross on top because underneath that he's revealing that he truly thinks that where you get into school is actually the it's the it's the ribbon that the pig gets at the state fair. It's like it's a it's a it's a ribbon for genetics. Uh, really, actually, dangerously gross. Uh, without even knowing it. It's, it, 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 it. People people assume I'm a boiler ready to explode, but I actually have very low blood pressure, which is shocking to people. Wait, that's Steven Tyler. Well, I, was, I, I picked Alex. I was, I was, I was like, actually, like a, that's so me. Like, that, so, I, I, that sounds like an Aerosmith lyric sound. That seems like something I'd be like bragging Wait, about. Like, everybody thinks I throw tantrums. Like, you haven't seen me throw a tantrum. You know, the crazy thing is, I'm fucking too low key. I'm too Wait, low key. Re you know? Read that one. Re read that one again for me, because that, that's like a rock and roll lyric. People though. assume I'm a boiler ready to explode, but I actually have very low blood pressure, which is shocking to people. That's uh, ACDC. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a version of me that I really don't like about myself. I kind of like my, my, my version of that is like. Uh, like I don't, I don't. I'm more. But it's shocking to me because I actually. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's it's like the worst ACDC song. I'm like a boiler. <laughs> People assume I'm a boiler, and I'm ready to explode, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't eat enough salt. Uh. <laughs> No, but I kind of, I, my pre-therapy self like really prides himself on like, oh, I'm very comfortable. Like I'm a very like, like I, 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 re I had to recognize through therapy that a thing that I was doing to people that I like, that I was like, if I perceived myself as being in a conflict with somebody or, so, or if I perceived someone as a threat to me or something like, like I kind of like had this pride in the fact that I, yeah, but I can withstand like, uh, I, I can. St st the only way I characterize it is like an airlock. Like I'll, 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 I'll step you over to where I know there's like noxious gases like coming out that are just like enough to make you turn green. But I, I've breathed them my whole life. Like I'm kind of like, what's wrong? You you look like you're uncomfortable. You know? Like I was really proud of that. Like like for a while, I thought that made me Wolverine. And uh, I don't like that guy anymore. And that's that's that, I think that's really what's behind that. He's like, yeah, I think I've, everybody thinks I'm like a big maniac, but the truth is, I'm fucking cool as a cucumber, and that's my secret. Like everybody else is like, let's shit get to him. It's like, no, you're. Everyone is letting you get to them. You're cool as a cucumber because you're. It's always a baby that's throwing its own shit. Like, yeah, of course you're not upset about it. <laughs> like you're already upset about your fucking pudding that you didn't get. <sighs> So many people are on television that don't know me, and they're like experts on me. That's me. I'm just bitching about like. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind a little bow. In Japan, they bow. I love it. Only thing I love about Japan. Harmon. That's Harman. so me. That's, That's so Harman. me. That's the Harmon. Like I would, and I would think like, man, I can't wait for the Japanese to hear that podcast. Be because because you, you don't like travel that much. Yeah, you, you you don't like Paris. You don't like Rome. You don't like. TV. Yeah, and I would think like you know I got that it's up like like that Dan Splaining thing. I'm like, here's the thing about like, like the Japanese will love this observation. Like I love the bowing. It's the only thing I like. You know, and, they, and then I would I would be like, why are they mad? Uh, Jimmy Carter used to walk off the airplane carrying his own luggage. Do you remember that? I don't want my president carrying. I want the freaking Marines to be carrying his luggage, and they want to carry his luggage. Harmon. No, that's dumb and Harman. gross. Dumb and gross. No, no, that, that, that's you. Like when you travel and you no. fly now, you you hate the airlines. You keep so calling much. the Marines want in to, to carry I, your I, luggage. I, I want to be treated like a human being. That's that, that's dumb and gross. That's what, what do you mean? You 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 like Jimmy Carter less because he carried his own luggage? Dumb and gross. Like what do you mean? That's fucking awesome. If John Wayne carried his own luggage and was president, you'd be sucking his dick. Fuck you. Like, like this idea that Jimmy Carter is a pariah because he like fuck it's just yeah. like, like like I just I'm like wait what I, I when I, I I'm now learning from you that he carried his own luggage I, can I go back and vote for him when I'm ten? 
poor fucking guy. All I knew about him was that he was a peanut farmer. Everyone just decided like, to just rail on this guy. I bet he was the best president ever. <laughs> Experience taught me a few things. One is to listen to your gut, no matter how good something sounds on paper. The second is that you're generally better off sticking with what you know. And the third is that sometimes your best investments are the ones you don't make. Dumb. Yeah, dumb. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? And that's probably ghostwritten. That means, sounds like it's from it means his book nothing. or something. It he means talks, nothing. He, he, he talks in circles. It's fucking stupid. It means that I'll, he, like, I'll, I'll end, oh, This is the last businesses. one, yeah. I think I was born with the drive for success because I have a certain gene. Dumb, gross, and harmon. Nah, come on. Uh, that's racist. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. Where, no. where, where do you put yeah, it? Yeah, no, so gross. I just, like, that's fucking, like, you're a Nazi. Like, like, what do you mean? That's a fundamental... Now, in, in his defense, like, I mean, who, the guy, yeah, he's talking nonstop, so who knows when he said that. Like, yeah, exactly. People but his dad the, is in the KKK. The people that like him because he represents the idea that, oh, gone are the days when poise is what makes the difference. A certain demographic has come to connect the dots of poise and diplomacy with the dots of elitism and you're boxed out of the system because you're a grody person. Um, I, I, you know, so, so, so you're never, got, it's like, he's, he's like a fire hose of garbage and people are like, oh, that means I, that, that means I don't have to be ashamed of myself. Shame's a, shame's a hell of a fucking thing to overcome. Like, I, I bet it feels really good. Must be nice. <sighs> Wish I could be a fucking idiot that all of a sudden wakes up one day, reads a fucking article, and decides they're proud of themselves. Jesus Christ, where do I buy that fucking drug? <sighs> <sighs> fucking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's $26 a bottle. It's a Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, this show's brought to you by Kettle But, but my doctor is awful. Is over prescribes regularly. Uh, so wait, you, you, is is uh, is is our is our is our is our, is our friend here? Jesse, are you here? Oh yeah. All right. Oh, wow. yeah. Jesse. Jesse Camp. He's everybody. got a package. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> he comes bearing gifts. Oh yeah. It's a baby George. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Wait, what? what? You want to pop that up? The baby George. Hey. It's bigger than the normal George Foreman grill. We got a baby George. It's the champion of rotisseries. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Thanks. For Absolutely. Coming. Jesse Camp, everybody. Uh, boy, you're you're quiet as a church mouse uh, uh, back there. I don't know why we keep being surprised. It's like, wait, you were here the whole time? No, no, he, I think he just showed up. Oh, well, no, but, but still. No, no, no. Like, um, no, yeah, that is true. But I didn't want to come <laughs> empty handed. And I, and I, you know, the baby George kind of came into my acquisition through some funny means. Yeah. I was actually collecting a, uh, a gambling debt for Jeff. Um, so Jeff sends people to collect his debts. No, no, no. Oh, Jeff okay. takes a lot of bets. Yeah. Okay. He's big news, man. When he's flying out of town for a Whose Line Is It Anyway gig, that's code for, yo, he's taking care of some Gambinos in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yeah. It's true. And with NFL as hot as it is right now, you know, a lot of debt. Uh, Jesse, Jesse do, me, do me a favor. Uh, fashion Corner, walk, yes. w walk me through your outfit right now. Well, let, let's talk about it. First off, I do just want to say, Dan, it's an honor to always, you know, get to see you. And um, and Jeff as well, and of course the game master, master. Spencer. Spencer. Yo, yeah. there you go. You got it. I didn't even help you. No, 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 no. But guys, that being said, I'll zip it and the fashion corner. Yeah, walk us from. Uh, you, you can start from top to bottom or bottom to top. And I want you to tell me the the, the methodology of your outfit. Oh yes. <laughs> The methodology to it. It's um, heavy on the ology, not so much on the other. But um, I'll tell you what, I start with uh, cowboy boots. I am a 10 and a half, and the uh, drapes match the curtains, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> the drapes match the Yeah, curtains. if you're ever curious about someone's wiener schnitzel size all you have to do is like look at like what their shoe size is okay michael j fox seven and a half we know what you're talking about yeah, yeah. 
I mean, Manute Bull, oh, yeah. hello. Well, he's as a person got, that's shorter very... than you and has bigger feet than you, I beg to differ. Oh, uh, I, no, I don't I, worry about it, Dan. What's your shoe size? Come on, hit him with the shoe size. I'm, I, I, I'm 11 and a half. Oh, size. yeah, he's 11 and a half, I'm 11 baby. and a half, and my penis is No, 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 don't. It's 11 and a half. Uh, uh, I, that I'm, just means it's going to grow later in life. <laughs> Like yeah. the baby George. Don't think that, that what you have now is your final penis okay. size. Oh, no. That's Everyone right. knows that the penis just grows older. If you go to a nursing <laughs> home, there are a lot of Long John Silvers in the place, you know? I think you're mistaken. Yeah, well, I, the, 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 your balls start to hang down to your ankles. Yes. Like that, that awaits all of us. You need to buy a second pair of socks <laughs> for the balls. But, yeah, I mean... You know, or for you know your hands if they're made. Wait, so Dan, you have bigger feet than Jesse, but he's he's bragging about a giant penis. No, no I wasn't. He said At ten and a half, I'm a moderately average, yeah, upper average penis. That's just average. If you went by my shoe size. Yeah, exactly. Which is the way to go, definitely. I mean, Jeff, you everyone know is a my, my dick is shaped exactly like a uh, an ampers- candy cane a- ampersand or an ampersand. Yeah, that. Is one not in the vocab banks? <laughs> Spencer's is shaped like one of those Dungeons and Dragons ampersands. It's like a dragon. Yes. Oh, yeah, it has a, a dragon head. I gotta, I gotta say this. All the ladies after a night with Spencer say, "Damn, thank you for Spencer's gifts." Oh, uh, damn! That was all a, of the ladies. That was yeah. <laughs> there were multiple. Yeah. All right, so now the, the, and not. Zero. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about your trousers now. What, what do you got? Yeah. You, you got some stretchy, stretchy yeah. tights Keep going working on? What's up. happening? Oh, wow. Well, it is rainy season here in L.A., and um, so you no need to delve under the car hood, but I have three pairs of leggings, jeggings, if you will, and then the, um, the armor, I, these are a pair of um, Massimo Supply Company. Yo, but they're women's jeans, I will admit. But I'll tell you guys this, I'm a very tall man, so I always wear cowboy boots because then, you know, you can always, it doesn't matter if your pants are too short, you know? That's, just, that's your secret. And like Stevie Nicks, I wear my boots all summer long. All right, mm. n- now, is, is there a fanny pack happening? What, what do you got No here? fanny pack tonight. <laughs> By the way, guys, to be honest, the reason I was a little late tonight is because I went to the Szechuan Fax Machine Theater. Why? But this is the Dynasty typewriter. Oh. Yeah, across town there's a Szechuan no. fax machine. All right. Okay, crickets. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> he's try, he's no, trying, he's trying, trying stuff All out. Right. Trying stuff out. Guys, right. just trying some, some stuff out. out. Yeah. You're wearing four layers of pants? Four layers of pants and then a pair of boxer briefs. Just one t shirt. Um,. One, uh, well, this is an interesting garment. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what I want to know about. <laughs> that's it, somewhere between bathrobe, dashiki, and cape. It defies like, description. Yo, bathrobe, it is a bathrobe, but dashiki, this was until I cut it down the middle. To be honest with you, a lot of times what I do, if there's a dress with a really cool fabric, I'll just, you know, cut it down the middle because a, a, a dress is just really a trench coat with a seam up it, you know? Yeah. I mean... That's the truth, you know? Lid, <laughs> lid blown, uh, lid off, blown. Of, off of dresses and trash cuts. Ha- happy to blow off that lid. That's one thing <laughs> I am happy to blow. And also my piccolo. <laughs> yeah. But, yo, um, not just one cut down the middle dashiki. One dashiki, two dashiki. There's no three dashiki, oh, four. Darn. But then, you know, just a good flannel. So I have something to keep my important um, cards, papers, and then, rolling paper. But then on top you yeah. have what, what can only... No, be- I'm just kidding. This is a... Um, EpiPen. Marker. A EpiPen. <laughs> yes. You're terrified I, of bee stings. Bee stings. I got bad peanut allergies and then I'm addicted to eating them. Whoa. That's an expensive and habit. Speaking of... Hold on, but guys, I, I didn't want to... Look, if there's one thing I got to just put out there, I'm, a, I'm, I'm here because I, I, I've loved Jeff forever. Dan is the coolest, and I'm a huge Harmontown fan. And so um, I did just want to say that, that something I heard Dan say tonight about Jimmy Carter, that was really, really dope. I mean, if we're going to think about presidents and stuff, Jimmy Carter has built literally over like three, four hundred houses for Habitat for Humanity with his wife, you know, since leaving office. I mean, he's a guy that will go, you know, like to Katrina and and, and build a house just with other volunteers. He's been doing that. And I mean, um, 
you know, I, I don't definitely mean to get political, but his vibes that he sent out were, were peace and love and good, and, and yeah, and then, you know, who knows? And, so, and supposedly they, they, Reagan they, came they, in they, and, they, they, you ranked, know. they ranked IQs of presidents, and, and Jimmy Carter is like, like pr- probably our most intelligent president we've ever had. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. No. I, say, I'm sorry, I grew up in the Midwest, so all I remember from that time, I was like eight, nine, ten years old, something around there, and I just remember this, like, hysteria for Reagan and like like yeah like everybody it was like I was I was socially conditioned to like oh Jimmy Carter's such a uh, fuzz nut like you know like and it was like I don't even fuzz know what a president is but yeah. I know I hate Jimmy Carter and he sucks he's such a terrible president I'm like what I'm just fascinated by that because I'm like what did he what like like he, he, it seems like such a quiet you know what no one typically doesn't talk about it, and I have a sneaking suspicion that's because there is nothing to talk about because he did a really good job, Absolutely. I'm assuming. And, 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 here's, and, and, here's, and because yeah. he, he was so progressive that they, that they destabilized him, they say, like, the, uh, like the, the whole uh, hostage crisis thing, it was set up for him to fail so that so that he would not get reelected and he'd be a one-term president. There was an oil crisis back then. I, yeah. I, I'm really going to show my ass if I start talking about this stuff because I don't know. But I, th- I have a feeling, I have a weird feeling that there was an oil crisis because OPEC was forming and like it was like the idea was that oh we had a little crossroads there. Where it was like we could have committed to our rhetoric about wanting democracy and all this stuff, but then you get a little tough choice there where the people yeah. that are sitting on top of the things okay. that you want um, start to get votes and stuff, and they're going to vote for people that you don't like. And I have a feeling that there was probably a that he probably exists in some kind of like weird back to the future maelstrom where oh either Biff goes you know starts washing your car or has a museum. I think and he's, he's done more after his presidency than most presidents did during their presidency. Yeah, because he's a humanitarian and he's an intellect, and uh, uh, weren't, weren't those the days when people that could actually uh, complete a sentence and be thoughtful yeah. and care about each other? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, I'll tell you this really quick thing. Um, like about maybe like 15 years ago, I was on a, on a road trip, just kind of driving randomly through Georgia, and we um, and I ended up in uh, Plains, Georgia, which is the, literally the town in Georgia where he grew up, and and still lives to this day. And there's maybe like 20 people in the town. It's it's uh, dirt poor, but it's still where he never stopped living there. He grew up there. I mean, this is the one thing I want to say to that. I don't think that as a country we should ever elect a president who has never been poor a day in their life because, yes. you know, that's going to be, a, I'm sorry to say, but someone that's going to lack empathy. And, I mean, um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know. I, I, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know anybody cool, like a, a, a my circle of friends, the, all the people that I look up to and respect and, and think um, highly of are people that know the value of what it means to have one dollar. Well, how about yeah. an easier choice, though? Just say that the title of president shouldn't be a thing that's like a reward or anything. It, it used to be a shit. Be like it a used to be a shit like a clerk job. In Ireland, this I learned from my ex-wife when we were just she was just here for Harmon Quest. Uh, uh, she was explaining that they have this thing that I, t- you know, I've been saying since the Trump election. When you look at like what people like about him and what people like, the only conflicts is like you could solve this in the blink of an eye by going, okay, if we if we're going to keep insisting that the title of president basically means American king, then. Maybe Make it a title worth that. In other words, just let him, like, he said himself all he wants to do is run around and say, hallelujah, like, love it, like, Louisiana, peace out, and have everybody, like, with the hats and the things. Ireland has a president that does that. That's, that's all they do. They elect the most Irish guy in Ireland, and they call him president, and then they have, like, I don't know what his title is. I don't know if it's prime minister uh, or something else, but it's, like, it's function. It's just, like, yeah, and then there's this person that rolls up their sleeves and probably went to law school and, like, runs a fucking country, like, like in, t- in cooperation with the bureaucracy that you need if you're going to have hundreds of millions of people, like, like, like under you, uh, that, 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 that you need your, their, their, their lives to not fall under the whims of things. Like, I... I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so and, like, and like, also, no, definitely, and also, someone that could actually build a, a all-inclusive society, you know, where um, where the the goal is for everyone to to prosper and do well. And I mean, and, and in order for that to happen, you can't have someone who's corrupt. You it should know? be a thankless job. You should like dread being uh, uh, any kind of politician because your life should be uh, under a microscope every minute of every day. Everything you say should be checked and double checked. And like, it should be it should be a job that attracts fetishists for organization. Uh, 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 fetishists employees. for organization. Yeah, people who, there are people 
people in the world who tend in our society to become accountants and uh, certain kinds of lawyers and things, civil rights lawyers and uh, yeah. uh, uh, people that those should be our politicians. The people yeah. who would be like, yeah, no, that's not a job for me. The reason they're saying that is because it's a disgraceful occupation for uh, uh, narcissists and blowhards, and they don't want people to look at how they smoked pot in college and like call or you know look their, their search histories up for debate or if they ever had an affair and stuff. Can we just strip that stuff out and yeah. make it a, a, a graceless occupation? And like, now they're all trying to do Instagram stories too, like uh, Beto O'Rourke's like trying to live tweet from the dentist yeah. so that yo he can be relatable to us. Don't so like, leave him live. Next, yeah. yeah, it's like great. You have dental health care. Go Beta. I mean, like <sighs> yo. Um, good thing your last name ain't Max. Hell yeah. The old video format. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But listen, getting back to the matter at hand. Oh, yeah, we got to keep this thing on rails. The fashion. Oh, no, but I mean, <laughs> Let's Jimmy, get back and Jimmy Carter's still alive, and if mental and physical health are linked, and, you know, I believe we all know they are, and, and having good energy in you, I mean, Jimmy Carter, he's alive way past 90. He's the real Clint Eastwood, you know what I mean? Would you be willing to share, Jesse? Like, just, just just say no. I think I asked you this last week, but I was kind of in a blackout. I was like, hey, next time you come out, can we, do you, would you be okay talking about the fact that recently, like, you were kind of off the grid for a little sure. bit? Sure. Stuff like that? Like, yeah, there's absolutely. A lot, a, lot, a lot of kids listen, and, like, they, they go up and down and, and, and stuff. And, like, oh, absolutely. You've been struggling with stuff, and, like, uh, you're, 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 are you on the wagon now? You want to talk about that stuff? Like, where are you oh, at Oh, right about now? sobriety? Yeah. Oh, I mean, um, like what you've done, where you've plummeted, where what you're back from, where you are. It's okay if where you are. Oh now boy, is lost okay. I, I, like, like also just yeah. say, no. I don't want to talk about that. I want to do. Uh, I want to have fun and not do that. You'll, you'll. But if you. No, no, no. Absolutely. I mean, there's definitely, you know, um, some lows and some highs. I mean, talking about politicians for a brief moment, they're a crazy bunch these days. I am someone who I can say has slept with not only Camilla Harris but also Lindsey Graham. And yo. There's some freaks in the Senate. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But no, but Lindsay. L L Lindsay I, I, but, but Lindsay Milligram. Lindsay Milligram. Yeah, Lindsay Mellencamp. But listen, <laughs> I want to say that, that no, no, Dan, I, I, from, from my heart, honestly, like, um, life, it, that's what makes life life is that, you know, you have amazing highs and then the rest is like lessons in humility and, you know, both are, are great and necessary. And so, um, no, I, and, and first off, one other thing, just as a human being, you, I mean, Harmontown, the movie, is such a courageous movie. And you, if anything, have always, and I mean just, just from the bottom of the heart, and why, um, I just want to say that you being such a courageous person and just, you know, letting everything out there so people can learn from it is such a beautiful thing. I, dude, I, I'd be honored. You know, to, uh, to it's not really answer. a selfless act. Like I, I appreciate it. I'm, 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 I'm alive because I found out that I can, I can say yeah. what is on my mind, and like I'll live longer than yeah. if I than if I bottle it up. And that's why I yeah. just because you were you were missing for a little bit. Absolutely. Like, I, like, like Je Jeff, you, you didn't you find him? I mean, it's like 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 well, you, no, like, like, you, you were withdrawn and you were. Je and Jesse, like, tell me like if you don't want to talk about it, but like like your sister called me up and said yeah. you, you you went off the grid, and she said like w where's Jesse and text him and I did, but you didn't have your phone. And then one day I got a fucking awesome text from you and you're like, hey man, and, and you were just cracking jokes and you were back. Yes. And. Uh, What's the story? Oh, of, yeah. The story about can, can we tell the Do story? People about would draw you? a lot of value from that if you've been to a dark anything, places. No, but if you don't want to talk about it. It takes you back to a dark place to talk about it. Then it no. accomplishes the opposite of the. No, intention. no, 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 not at all. I'm, I'm guys, honestly. But we, I'm we, we were to... real fucking worried about you, and and we we put the bat signal out and says where's Jesse? Yes. And then you told me when you texted me, we, and I called you, uh, and you said it's like finding out what it would be like to die because I find out how much people would care about me. And, and like, 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 the, yeah. he, and you go, oh, like, like, these are the people that would care if I died. And, Don't mistake and, that as advice for the youth or anything. Like, hey, you know what? You should try. But, but, uh, but no, but, but you found out that like, like, there are people because I, I think of you, Jesse, as somebody, and, and my joke is always that you would give me the seven shirts off your back. 
Uh, <laughs> but or you, did you, she do you, two you're, of the you're that kind of friend. You would you would you would do anything for a friend. Well, yeah. And then you found out who your friends were when when you went off the uh, off the air. As far for a as while. I understand, like yeah. it's pretty obvious from your personality. Sorry, I know we're explaining you to you, but but like I, I like I think it's the, the thing that draws me to if I, like the reason I want to hear about. Any 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 things that you've battled just because of this? Because um, you're a really nice guy, and I I don't know you that well, but I I feel like it's like seawater where like you know from a drop like what the content of an ocean is, and that you're not a judgmental person. You don't you don't put a lot of energy out towards like. Um, worrying about other people and how they should be in order for you to be happy. No, and it's important for people to learn that there's a, I mean, or to, or to deal with the fact that, like, people, like, like, like if that hurts, like, 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 like th- th- I feel like there's too many people in our society that, like, are like that. Like, look, I don't want to judge other people and all this stuff. There's, like, that comes with a lot of self-loathing, a lot of self-torture, like, directing a lot of energy inward where you're like, I'm a piece of shit, so I'm just going to, like, medicate and, like, vanish and... Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of this. So, anyways, that, I, I, that, that's why I'm like, that's no, why no, I think yeah. it could be so valuable to talk about because absolutely. I um. So, in order to um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys the whole story. In order to put it um properly in perspective, um. Oh, but I don't in any way in any way want to um, throw my sister under the bus either because she um she is a fantastic person with her own demons too. But um. So basically, um, from like about um, 2015 through like the end of 2016, I've been working with my sister on, um, on a new series, and it had been going amazing. I mean, we had, um, you know, uh, and we still all, you know, it's still all there, and, it can, and, and we're still working on, on, on putting it together. But we, we um, basically, I had worked really hard on this project uh, with my sister and for, um, you know, for some reasons. And, 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 it, and to be really blunt, I was really kind of like on the, on the verge of making a, a comeback that had been like 15 years in the making. And, but this is, this, uh, uh, what I'm trying to get to is that, you know, like um, my sister and I kind of had a falling out over some, some crazy stuff or she really, went into a, a dark patch and then, you know, um, we couldn't see the, the show to fruition for a moment and I kind of just fell into a depression and I had been sober for about, um, and, and when I say sober, I just mean like no hard substances, you know, and um, I don't consider marijuana and I don't consider, you know, like alcohol, um, you know, to, to really be a drug. But at the same time, you know, anything that you abuse and, and um, you know, anything that's uh, basically just numbing you in your pain without allowing you to grow at all, I mean, that's, that's an addiction and that's a drug. And so what I'm getting into is that I did kind of like fall into um, a year and a half drug addiction with um, a drug that I hadn't touched in over like uh, seven and a half years. Because I was just, you know, um, uh, the, the, the fallout from... Well, uh, just uh, things with my sister, um, you know, and then um, everything, you know. Yeah, I just kind of fell into a depression, but um, where I'm going with all of that is, um, so then I um, basically, so I was using some heavy drugs for like almost a year and a half, and then I ended up kind of just, you know, in Fontana, California, as one does. <laughs> and, um, and you no, know, n- nothing. I'd, nothing good happens in, in Fontana, by the way. So, no, uh, r- Fontana r- rich man's has NASCAR. its own twenty-four hour auto zone. So think about <laughs> what that's Whoa. telling you. You need headphones to live there, right? I, I, the only time I've been to Fontana, I had headphones on the entire time. Oh well, get this: if you want your car fixed, <laughs> relatively dirt ass cheap, all you got to do is and wait until it's about ten because the freaks come out at night. But you go to the 24-hour auto zone in Fontana after 10, and basically there are tons of people really high on supplements in the parking lot, either working on their own car or just hoping that someone might need work done on their car. Yeah, so, we, like, we, when you call me, you said you I'm telling you, you get four of these after-hour auto zone, like you know, uh, mechanics in the parking lot, like together, and you'll have a new engine in a car in like two hours. <laughs> 
for like a hundred bucks and maybe a bag of flaming hot Cheetos, you know. <laughs> so I'm telling you. Well, you called me. You, you were at a pick apart in Fontana, right? You, you oh, that was way after. That was that was a couple years into things. All right. I mean, so this is where the story gets good. Is that I think that, um, and again, I don't in any way mean to slag my sister, and I and I, um, uh, you know, uh, she. Well, just use your I statements. That's what I've learned. If yeah. she's a part of the story, but you can still say, "Look, I was, I was That's hurt. Great. I, I felt, I felt bad, or whatever." That's great. And you don't have to worry about slagging her. That's great. What well, exactly? I mean, um, well, during during my time of depression, you know, I didn't have much, um, you know, of, uh, of a relationship, you know, with my sister much either, and she was kind of in her own dark place too, and so. I think you know that's why I had really kind of become despondent, and um, because you know, uh, you know, this was my creative partner, my 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 best friend, and my sister, and so you know, I I, I really missed her so much, and we were really on the verge of um, some really cool things, and so I mean, like, um, uh, so what I was gonna say is um, this: is that. <sighs> Wow, I know that this does sound no, like not a, many brain cells are in here, but I'm really trying to just. It sounds uh, like it sounds like it's important, and people are listening, and they've been through way worse. Believe me, as oh. far as quality of show, like uh, <laughs> okay, they're 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 listening and they're. Fine. Well, then about, and you can take your about time this and find time, I just you know met this Anita Baker impersonator named <laughs> Tito, and um, that's a whole other chapter for another podcast. But I'll tell you this. Um, that um, oh Jeff by the way um, <laughs> uh, Tony um, what's your friend the friend that works at the car wash with the obnoxious mustache what oh. that puts a turtle wax in it oh no this anyway, is how Jeff finds no, out the no, mustache no no we're going is back we're going back we're going back but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I hope we have a friend <laughs> he loves that mustache we do I would love his, to have a his, friend with a yeah. His name is Tommy Tango, and he says hello. Well, you know uh, Tommy T. I, I, I don't, but thank you. Yo. The mustache. But guys, getting, getting, oh, wow. You see, that's myself. Honestly, but, but, but that's just, a defense mechanism yeah, because it's easier yeah, yeah, to yeah. joke. Jesse, like, and I'm uh, going to get into the real heavy that's stuff. Okay. And so, um, you can I, also You can also pull up and out, and we'll touch you back on it to, another yeah. day. Okay. But, but, but I, think, <laughs> I think, like, we're almost right at, at, okay, at, yeah. at the end, and so, you know, just two more seconds, guys, yeah. and we'll be over the waterfall and in our own... We're doing um, it. it, it yeah, do you, like, like, you tell us as much as you want, because, um, first of all, I'm happy you're back. Yeah. Because I was worried about you, and also... America's happy I'm back, <laughs> am I right? Yeah! Oh, man. But, U.S. Thank but, you. But, but, but as, as Definitely Dan, didn't have to coax that one. As, as, okay. as, Dan, as Dan said, uh, and quite rightly, the, uh, like, to the extent that you are willing to share what you went through, yeah. I think is helpful to people that listen to our show. So like like like, like not, not to sound corny ab but absolutely, like sixteen absolutely. year olds. Absolutely, I'd I'd really you know um without sounding corny ab about this, I mean like just to put it in in real like um you know black and white cliff note terms, you know um I'd been working with my sister who I still love and adore um and and we we made this insane project where you know we have um. I mean, well, of course, the Jeff Davis appearance, but everything from, you know, Miley Cyrus to George Clinton to Alice Cooper, um, lots of really cool interviews and, and crazy sketches and, you know, me at Charlotte Hornets games and, you know, and um, in West Virginia, Appalachia, it's like just a, a whole crazy show project that we're making and then we had this big fallout, and so, you know, I, I, I just equate it, like, to, like, if you were a part of a band and you guys had been through, like, this journey and were about to, like, you know, finally release your record, the band, you know, breaks up and the record is shelved. That's just a head state. And, 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 but you know what? The, the more I'm talking about this, I just want to say, you know, like, fuck me, because, I mean, these are really quality problems to have, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's not so much about the project. It's about um, just losing, you know, my sister who, you know, I... I you guys just, you know, it's like my right arm, you what, know? What's your, right. what's your status with her right now? No, we, we, um, we don't really talk at all you know and I think so she, she was freaked out man because she, yeah she, like, like i i barely know her yeah uh, and she well, she was texting this, me and, this is and the when i was in fontana i had actually left my phone in um a car of a of, of a dude and then i didn't really um exactly know how to get it back and um kind of was just you know again in a depressed state so i kind of like was like you know 
all right, I'm going to enjoy not having a phone. And this was only about like nine days. And then, um, but it was, honestly, it felt kind of cool like to not have a phone. And I was just really sorting through, you know, my problems. And, uh, and so I had, and also kind of during that time without the phone, I made a decision mentally to be like, okay, I'm stopping um, doing the drugs that I was doing completely. And, um, you know, I, 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 because at the end of the day, you know, I was doing that to, to get myself through a hurdle. I was doing like an upper type of drug. And what I'm getting at is, um, you know, if you all of a sudden, you know, you, you find yourself alone, but you'd made all this, you know, great progress and you didn't want to lose everything, but you were just really confused how to move on without your band, you know, my thinking is, well, let me do this drug that will like, you know, kind of like help focus me and, and numb you know, my sadness over what happened, because it was a really, um, you know, like, emotional thing, and, um, you know... So you first turned to a project-oriented uh, narcotic. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. That um, makes a lot of sense. I, I, that, 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 that's, that's an interesting, like, explanation of that, like... Uh, yes, definitely. Um, is, 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 but, is the project the thing that, like, when, I, when you invited me to the Whiskey to meet L.A. Guns. Yes. So you still have all that footage. Oh, it's all there. Yeah. It's gonna be. Great. I just I'm learning how to how to to edit it now. I got I got like, it, like, like years it, of content. You go backstage to a rock show with Jesse Camp, and uh, guess what? Everybody is happy that Jesse's there, and he has all this awesome footage of him and his sister interviewing people and just talking backstage. And yeah. th that that is something that I would absolutely need to see. Oh yeah, it's it, amazing. But is, is it still extant? Like it'll happen still or no? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it's a, it's a really cool project. It's kind of like you know, like Mike Judge, Mike Judge's Tales from the Tour Bus. You know, in that um, you know you have crazy rock stuff interweaving with just um, basically like you know uh, fun travel segments, like you know going to weird uh, flea markets in like Knoxville, Tennessee, and helping out in the wig department there with you know. <laughs> But, but like, Senior ladies. Wa watching, wa watching famous rockers meet you, like I, because I've I've seen that. Yeah. And it's it's pretty magical. Like like th that's something that should happen because like like th to know you is to love you, and to know yeah. you is also like to know that like you would like always make things happy and fun. So like uh, we, we, you have to finish this thing. Well, let me. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll and and just and super just super quick, you guys. What I want to say is that basically, like during those. So this is the 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 funny part about me. This is the part of the story where I find out that I was a missing person because I had no idea. Okay, because like, I guess you know, like my so like I had emailed. My, oh, get this. Okay, because I'm I'm very I am. I'm, very close with my mom. So just about you're nine days gone. Nine days gone. You're, 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 you nine lost days the phone gone, and you're like, and no, then three no days, phone's a good thing. And yeah, and nine days gone to paint the picture. Nine now. So I'm in Fontana. Um, are you editing? Are you like? Are you like working on a laptop on? Oh, that? They're like, and you're like, no, 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 no. yeah, okay. You're no, just, you're just, you're just living you're, life, just like you're just focused. <laughs> yeah, you're experiencing focus. Uh, well, we talk about the fashion, and I'm not bragging out of school here, but Jeff knows this too. Like, I'm a big, I'm a, I'd have to cross diagnose myself with another addiction, and that's I'm a, I'm a thrift store junkie. And like you know, you're you're wearing a jacket right now that can only be described as like any get your gun meets uh, meets wild, Sybil. wild Bill Hickok. Yeah, with a little Nell in there. <laughs> Yo, I thought Jodie Foster. I mean, who wouldn't want to be the costume designer on Nell? It's just like bed sheets. Okay, the thread. Count John good. Bon Jody. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, great story here. Great shout out. And here's another thing. If 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 and I want I really want to put my services out there. If you guys cuz I, I when I was here um, right before Christmas, you guys had Pete Holmes on. That was that was epic brilliant show. I do I I love one other talent is that I'm, I think of myself as a mini booker, and I'm I'm not talking about Richard Grieco's character on the last season of 21 Jump Street. Hey, whose name was Booker. Okay. A lot of a lot of uh, that was a, a reference for two people here. Okay? <laughs> yes. Oh, mis misread the crowd there. Okay. 
But no, I mean, you guys are more of a uh, Gilmore Girls kind of bunch, and that's cool with me, you know? <laughs> Do you guys know that Dan guest starred as Mailman Jerry on two unaired episodes of Gilmore Girls? <laughs> very, very cool stuff, you know? It's only shown in Japan for reasons Dan knows a little about. And um and and so does Lauren Graham. Do you want to but, talk about? Hey, that? no, let me let me um, let me no. get back on track. Okay. Back on track. Back on. Is this is it? So so I am um six day, um basically it's nine days after I had lost my phone and said just fuck it, you know. In that and and then like three days sober from that. But then so I was three days sober. Um, I started to get a bit of a sinus infection, and so I went to a hospital. Yeah, I shouldn't say, but it's very close to Fontana and it has its own hospital and two Goodwills and a Savers and it starts with an R and it's its own county. Okay, Riverside. I was in oh. Riverside. I go into the hospital and like... Um, and you, you had been missing for months as far as I knew. Like, yeah. No, that, oh, we, sh we should suffix this. So basically my sister had only briefly talked with my mom that, I'd been mi that she hadn't heard from me. My mom and I do talk on the reg. And so then I think my sister did, I think her imagination, but maybe genuine concern, maybe, maybe some guilt, she, maybe she, she, whatever. She, 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 was, she, she was really she was worried that I, because she knew I was depressed. I mean, like she did know that. And so, I mean, I think that she I'm maybe the, genuinely was worried that I maybe did something rash because I was so broken up about, uh, you know, like, um, you know, just, uh, it's a really rough situation, I don't you people, know. People that want to hurt you, like, like uh, no business in your, your relationship, but people that want to hurt you um, and have the choice between soliciting finding you it's a, it's one thing to say like, i come from a big line of like well let's be dramatic about so and so's problem and like want to help them because actually what we're doing is we're weaponizing our like concern because it, it, they're they're here every christmas and let's fuck with them but um it's another thing for to be off the i don't not knowing your sister i can safely say hey, i don't think it was her animosity that provoked her to explain to people how dire it was that you well, were she, missing. She was very I, concerned I don't with think me. That that she, was, she texted me and let me knew let, let me know that, I, that she was really worried. I think I think if you I think if you wanted to hurt somebody and they're and they're off the grid, whether it's nine days or three months, like you you're it's not the part of you that hates them that makes you go. This is really serious. I even if it's not really serious from your point of view, it's not the part of them that hates you that makes them go to that high note. It's the part of them that wants you found because maybe even the yeah. part of her that feels a little bit of responsibility. And I think that's very salvageable as much as this project too, and and, and, and easily salvageable. And and, uh, and, and like what if, not to like conduct your fucking no story, no. but like. The feeling of that rope coming back out of that, like and, and, and like, like yeah. this idea of like you didn't know you were missing, and then and then and then Ab you absolutely, <laughs> Dan, absolutely. So um, so I'm in this hospital, and um, you know, I think I gave my um, you know, a, a variation on my name. I don't remember. I was not. Oh man, um, I love a good emergency room, and so <laughs> I was in one, and um. <laughs> Basically, like, you know, the, they were the, you know what? Screw that. This hospital was really a beautiful place. There's a hospital. I don't and know they, how and many. They had, they had one, they asked one thing of you. Don't name our county. R right, right. We've got two Goodwills and a great emergency room, and you're like, Riverside, and now every fucking you asshole. Got, you, you got rumbled in there because <laughs> you, you said the other name, but they go, but you're Jesse. Yes, yes, exactly. So basically, I told the nurse that my name was, you know, maybe um, John Camp. I don't even know. Um, not again, just for, you know, like, just because, you, you know what I mean? You, Who you, wants to give you, your you, real you, info and social you, you security them, number you, to a you hospital? Told them they, you, you told them their, your actual name, but they're like, but aren't you Jesse? Right, 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 right. So I, I said probably that, because um, my full, you know, my full name is Tito Camp, and so basically said I'm Tito Camp and then they're like okay Tito but like the nurse looked at me like she kind of like knew who I was which was really weird because I was you know um yeah a little disheveled perhaps or then again I don't look much different than now I'm, I'm very much a kindred <laughs> spirit with a drunk Gary Busey but um 
where I was going with this is that so basically then the nurse is like, okay, all right, you know, Josh. I think I said I was Josh because that's that's very close to my um, yeah. my full name, which is Chad would have been believable. Yeah, I'm a. I look like Chad. You look so much like a Chad. A Chad Wick is also what they call. Um, the uh, part of a candle that you light called Chad. Stay on target. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> basically, then I'm sitting. So the nurse is like, "Okay, Josh," you know, and then the then and then then the doctor comes in and he's like, "Jesse, what's going on?" And I'm like, "What the fuck? How did he know Jesse? I, I've been telling people I was Josh." And so I said, "Oh, Jesse." But then I knew the jig was up. They knew who I was, and I, and <laughs> yeah. so I was just like. Like, f trying to put the pieces together, like, I know that I'm a national treasure. I know that the U.S. <laughs> has made several, not just one stamp with my face on it, but, like, ten different, you know, stamps yeah. biannually with my head on it. It's great. Um, the new 34 stent Jesse Camp stamp is Jesse Camp stamp for all you tramps. Okay, enough rhyming. I, I, I have a camp stamp uh, 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 over my butt. Jeff does have a camp stamp from the time he, um, he was with my mom, and <laughs> I didn't understand uh, the relationship at I, the time. Now get, I do. Get, get, it was back, a very beautiful Harold and the Maud type of deal. Back on target. Back, back on, on track. Okay, so, um, so the doctor was like, je you know, like, just, you know, like, okay, Jess. So I, 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 so again, I had said that my name was Josh to the nurse, and then the nurse was like, Josh. Okay, Josh, why don't you come back here with me? And then she came in, Josh, the doctor will see you now. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, I'm Josh. I'm getting a bit of a sinus infection. You know, I just need some antibiotics. I didn't rush to that part yet. Never self-diagnose yourself at the doctor's office. That is a sure way to not get the prescription you're trying to get filled. You know, like, don't go in there and be like, oh, you know, like, let them assess your back pain. Just look real grimacing in the face so they really believe you're in pain. Don't oversell it. Okay, that's to my homes in New Hampshire and West Virginia. You know who you are at the pill mill, but Whoa. back on track. I'm just kidding. Who am I to throw stones? What I'm really getting at is that, yo, I'm like lost in Fontana, F in California, end up at a hospital in Riverside. Basically, the doctor had like seen something about me being missing on TMZ. I had no clue in the nine days since I had lost my phone that somehow like I had been reported on like, you know, on like people.com, you know, um, does the dick meet, meet the expectations of the foot size website, <laughs> you know, dick it or stick it? I mean, no, what am I talking about? I'm sorry, guys. Dick it or honestly, stick it is something I think we can make a, some money. Dicker is sticker. I think it's definitely so like a, you're, you know, you're, you're a grinder had, swipe left or right. Your doctor yeah, is at, the, at the ER had seen you on TMZ. They had seen me, and so they were so actually really, really super cool. They brought me like two meals of hospital food. I'm, I didn't ask. They were just like, they, they were like super cool. Like they were like basically like they owned a sports bar and Kid Rock <laughs> came in there. Yeah. They were like, you know. They were dope. They were just like, you want some Dilatins? And I was just like, no, <laughs> you know. No, <laughs> all right, sure. Bring what's them the, out. Like what's, a, like what's a the street value? Yes, I'll take it. But no, they were really, really cool and really sweet and really encouraging. And they said, you know, um, honestly, something along the lines of, you know, that, that, you know, you have a good soul and you're a good kid. And I, and not kid, because I am. Definitely now, like um, I'm, I'm in the halftime show, but yo, I'm, I'm 39 years old, so 40 <laughs> is the halftime, and then you know what I mean. If life is a football game or a Super Bowl, but um, back at the matter at hand, and again, I'm totally be honest. That's a self-defense mechanism to kind of like you know to, to try to put some humor on this, because because these, yeah, it's it is rough talking about this is necessary, but the. These, these were beyond humbling times, growing times, and times when, you know, um, you, 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 you just, you, uh, it, all of this in the end is, is, is good because, you know, it, it. But in that moment, were you, yeah. ir were you irritated? It's okay if the answer is yes, yeah. because at the time, it was like, like, are you, as a little, uh, well, you're you know. Like, oh, I'm here by choice and I don't want to be rescued and it's embarrassing that people, like, I, I can imagine that would be very humiliating. Oh. 
and, and, and maybe you angering. know when you when you find out you're a missing person when you were just you know um, at the you know end of uh, a year and a half drug odyssey and that ends in again Fontana it's right off the 10 by the way <laughs> Fontana is that beautiful hamlet between Ontario and San Bernardino yes. okay oh. so you got, again if, if you want to go to Fontana uh, t- take the 10 freeway there's nothing fun about it it's a lot heavier on the fawn <laughs> as in Damn. dude fondue is a f- chocolate and cheese and fondue is like and it has some I alcohol know that, in that, it. Okay, final thought we have to wrap up here, though, we is the do. whole we thing. We do of, have to wrap up. I know, and I will, like a fucking condom about to go into Heidi Flight. I don't want to read your yeah. story for you, but we're looking for that no, moment no. of like the crossing yeah. of the return threshold absolutely. where you're like, absolutely. okay, absolutely. I'm coming back. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I got that moment for you and more. <laughs> Jesse, d- I'm going to pull a Stefan. Jesse, Redemption is in Lower East Side New York Bar where there are lots of midgets that wear out fanny packs. <laughs> Jesse, I, I have to say, the, the, the day that you called me up and you had been gone for a while and you called me up, I, I, you couldn't... I, I, I got to say, yeah, that, that, the, the feeling that, that hit me, I think I know where you're getting at, Jeff, is that when the doctors, they, sh- they, they really showed a lot of love and, and, and that's, I had no idea that I was missing. When I had checked out of the planet or you know, lost my phone, I definitely wasn't wasn't in the headspace of thinking that there's a, a a big world out there that that cares about you or that you're significant. You know what I mean? I definitely felt like um, the opposite. Broken. I felt, you know, almost to the point of. Here's the thing: is that if you have nothing to lose, there is a real freedom with that. I yes. mean, like like Chris Christopherson, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. You probably thought you were doing yourself and other people a favor. Yeah, I mean, I didn't care anymore, and I did. You probably I felt just, more honest than you had been. You felt, but you felt like, uh, like I, that's the riveting part of this. Like I feel this way so much, and like I want to hear from people that have gone and come back. Yeah. So uh, yeah. sorry, sorry to interrupt, but no, not at all. I mean, that's definitely a sign of, um, you know, of 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 not being. Uh, well. I, no, let's just call it what it is. I mean, you're depressed. If you're not, if you lose your phone and you don't want to like immediately go to an Apple store or AT and T or Sprint or whomever you get your phone from, <laughs> um, again, Pick if you wireless. want a good phone at a Mint relatively mobile. cheaper <laughs> price than even offer up, the 24-hour AutoZone in Fontana mm. has all your needs: mobile mechanics, Pay mechanics to grind with, trans. Gendered. They got ballerinas. mechanics to grind. As with? you felt that feeling when you felt that, that very complicated layered feeling of I lost my phone and for the first time in my life I feel like actually maybe that's the way to go. I feel good. My All life. Things. Like, is there yeah. is there a return threshold equivalent? I'm just a screenwriter from the Sidfield yeah. School. Like is to, there to paint a picture to to really be just 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 blunt about where I was prior to this. Um, Did you save a cat at any point? No, that's a, that's a screenwriting joke. Okay, continue. Sorry. No, I mean. Um, no, I, no, no. Sorry, I don't get distracted by that. It didn't even get a laugh. So not worth it. Well, also, just, also just to add to that, you know, I I I like to think. I didn't save a cat. No, I, I did, sure yeah, you ate shouldn't a have. Pussy. You shouldn't have, and that's not okay, story structure. Okay, that's okay, a different yes, thing. Yes, it's a dialectic yes, about. Okay, that go was ahead. Not bad. But um, but here's the thing, and I'm, and believe me, man. Like Bruce, do not even. I, I don't even mean to even remotely think that I'm like on the level of like a of a, of a, of, a, of a, a beautiful soul like a Bruce Springsteen. But um, to be really honest, I was just so broken that I was kind of wandering the streets of Fontana, kind of like Bruce Springsteen in the streets of Philadelphia video. You know where I I, I believe. You know, from the movie where where Tom Hanks has AIDS and he knows he's not gonna survive that, and and you you know you're just um, pulling back from life in a way. I mean, I, I was just at at a point where I was almost, and I I don't I don't, man, I was keep just going, at my threshold going, of of what I could endure. But the thing is, is that. Uh, having the strength to endure, I want to let everyone in this room know that, like you know, I, I I was just depressed, but never in a bazillion years would I ever, no matter the level of depression. And this is not also me passing judgment on people that 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 check out and can't take it. But I, I still know, even in my darkest hours, what a blessing it is 
to be alive. And, um, you know, uh, I'm um, very much, you know, of the opinion of, like, if you've... Uh, they say this about successful people, that when you realize something's not going right, you know, you can abandon it quickly. And that, you know, the longer we... That if you're in a toxic relationship, you know, but you put a lot of time in it, you're apt to stay in it longer because you've already invested this time, so you don't want to lose the time you already have, and that's why bad relationships kind of go on and on and on forever. And what if you feel that about your life? Well, I, I said well, this, this yesterday for myself, and I think for everybody, I love you. Yeah. And uh, no, I know that, and I and 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 it's. I didn't mean to shut you off on that, Jeff. I know that, and but I mean to hear that from you. That 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 that's a heavy em, em, emotion. But I mean that was, it was a, it was, what this it was a really this is beyond a, a life changing experience because I mean I'm I'm not saying that I was like a guy who jumped off the golden bridge Golden Gate Bridge and like survived and now no I had like this that's the danger to me I, that that's the thing is but, that we, we a lot of us associate like the idea of these thoughts with like, I was never ever gonna, to put a gun in your mouth all yeah. this stuff but like the the these decisions can be made in the it, it I know exactly the feeling that you're talking about where yeah. you're like you know what what if I was a fucking ghost? What if I didn't exist? And that's different from saying, I'm going to take proactive action to do this dramatic thing because you're feeling the opposite of dramatic. Yeah. You're feeling worthless. You're feeling like, like, just like, it feels in those moments like, um, not just liberation, but like a weird medicinal kind of like, yeah, this is it. This and, is and what I need. This feels good. Totally. And it's, I'm not going to say, no, it's not good, but I'm also going to say it's incredibly dangerous because you're alone. And so yeah. it, it was there. Was there a con? I mean, was as, there a as much as to yeah. that? <laughs> Where and, you and, came and, back? Well, yeah. <laughs> or have you been dragged back and we're no, going to lose you again to that? Never. No, no, no. This, um, no, to be really blunt about that. And, uh, and, and the other thing, too, is that I'm not, I'm not any. Anything coming out of my mouth, I'm not trying not to, to, to pat myself on the back, but I mean, like, there's definitely, you know, the, the fun-loving side of me, but I mean, I'm, you know, uh, um, I'm experienced as far as, like, that you could, you know what, no, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say, but I could definitely just say that, you know, like, if I'm walking the streets in Fontana, you know, I mean, like, uh, I, I love to, to bring... I live like to put positive energy out there into the world. That's that's my that that's really the only reason to live life. Where I'm going with this all um, is that uh, and this this is really heavy, but I promise I didn't take you guys this far to to abandon it. But what I the the point I was trying to get at when I brought up that whole thing about successful uh, people and then knowing how to quit early, but like that that. Really, if you're following your heart and you've invested so much time in a, in a bad relationship, you know, you want to hang in there. Well, I mean, um, uh, I'm very much like that in life. You know, I didn't put in these 39 years to not, you know, now I've, I've been in it that I'm definitely wanting to see it all the way till 80, maybe 90 or, you know, with... Um, yeah, head transplants, maybe 110, <laughs> you know, who knows? But where I'm really going with all this is that um, it was it, for two things, and then I promise I'll wrap this up, but it was really, uh, I think that what our subconscious is, our subconscious do for us is sometimes incredibly protective because I thought, that I think in a lot of ways that I, I don't know this is going to sound crazy, but you know, like, I wanted to lose that phone and I wanted to go off the grid because I ultimately wanted to get to that place. I wanted to make a low for myself and make that low as fast as I could because I wanted to land and I didn't want to live the way that I had been living and um, I just didn't, you know, and, um, and, and I didn't, I... I didn't want to numb the pain. That's basically all I did for like a year and a half was just numb this emotional pain, didn't grow from it. My body was just, and subconscious and mind was just, you know, telling me to let go because one thing I completely do believe in is that I, I think, and, and, and obviously if you were at, in 9-11 and you were with all that the, the debris that was so cancerous, you're going to get cancer, but I, I do think sorry, that... Sorry, that's a, probably a weird time to break that to you. Oh, yeah. 
but that anger is a cancer. And so I really think that, long story short, that I needed to kind of like, you know, go off the grid. But my thinking was just that I was going to do this. I was going to then, you know, get a couple of days sober and then just continue on my journey. It was almost like wanting to get clean in like a cocoon. And I, so I, I just, and I came out and, and I had no idea. Uh, what I told Jeff is true that, 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 that basically you would go on like, you know, Instagram and you'd see like, you know, like people would be like, oh, Nikki Six was, you know, <laughs> looking for you and, you know, when President Barack Obama <laughs> was looking for you, you know what I mean? And Rex Tillerson was looking for you. What's the connection there? Oh. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, like, Rexy was always a big fan, you know? I mean, it was just like, he would be like, yo, <laughs> Jess, get on the big Exxon Valdez cruise boat thing and let's party. <laughs> I mean, but... Rex Tillerson was looking for you. Oh, man, me uh, and Rex, look, yo. Well, look, I'm, it's a hacky part of me that's, like, pushing yeah. for this weird return threshold thing. I think the incredibly valuable the, thing is the resonance of, like, everybody, whether or not they drop off the grid and go to Fontana lose their phone or not, we constantly are combating this feeling yeah. of, like, like, I'm a fucking ghost. I would be better focused and doing a better job. All this, it's, it's like it is possible to kill yourself um, with everyone's permission because you'd never checked with them because you didn't talk about it. it. You can you can slip away into shadow and you don't perceive it as shadow. I'm not, yeah. and I know that the whole time you're like, look, I never intended to do any of this, and I am not telling you. No, you perceived it wrong. I'm I'm saying the reason that story is so valuable is because I think everybody listening is constantly going like, well, what, what if I, what if I, what if I, what if I, and it's not always what if I did something dangerous, what if I did something, it's, it's sort of just sort of like, 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 would anyone miss me? Like, 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 shouldn't I just, shouldn't I just be by myself? And there's a really fine line between that, like, self-help and, like, the opposite. And yeah. And, 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 and here's the thing is that, I mean, um, I think what it really boils completely down to in the, in the, the soul and the spirit of us, of, of people, is that is, is having hope. Hope is everything. If you have hope, hope will fuel positivity. I mean, one big lesson I learned from all of this is that mental health is the most important thing we have. And that, like your physical health, like you do have to exercise and, and, and be conscious of, of what you're eating. You know, mental health, I just always took it for granted b before the last couple of years. And I realized that it's incredibly important to, to, um, to be social, to not self-isolate and to be with all your friends and, and to live a, a full life and, and to say yes and, um, just, but but more than that, I mean, um, uh, it's it's a battle out there, and and there's never been a harder time to be a human being. No, scratch that statement. I can't believe I was about to say there was never a harder time to be a human than 2019. What am I thinking, caveman? And like, you know, <laughs> yeah. oh my they god, I'm gonna get trampled right, by a buffalo. Right. Jeez, this Let's is give it up, everybody. Thank you for coming to Harmontown. Catch a camp, everybody. Yo. Thank you for, for being vulnerable, Wait, sharing your, your, I, I, your pain. I, 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 but, but before I go out on the music, I want to say, what? Jesse, I fucking love you. I'm, I'm a lucky man to have <laughs> <that> <laughs> the quality. Best. And uh, anybody <laughs> listening, uh, if you ever get the lucky break to hang out with Jesse Camp, you are a fucking lucky human being. Well, a couple of things to plug, if I may. Yes. All right. I got a... Um, who here, who here is a big salt and pepper fan? <laughs> well, yo, get this. It's not a competing podcast, us. but I have a pepper cast. That's right. Me and Peppa from Salt and Pepper. What? We are All right, Jesse Camp, everybody. Yo. Uh, Peppa this has been Harmon Town. Spencer Crittenden. I'm Jeff Davis. Dan Harmon. But for real, uh, Baby Jesse, guy. Uh, you, you're a joy to know. You're a joy to be around, and I, I appreciate Thank you, you so much. to the bottom of, of my boots, man. Thank Thanks you all. For the Drive fast and take chances. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.